Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. What is happening, Hezekiah Walker? Chris is back, yo. Chris mm. is back. Chris OG is COVID, back. middle-aged COVID in the building. But he's <laughs> beat it yet again. Yet again. How many times Undefeated. you beat COVID, Chris? How many times you beat COVID? Uh, this will be my second time. Bro, Damn. isn't it crazy how you are undefeated against China like Taiwan? You and Taiwan have continued to route China every time it times to take you out. Give it a minute. Yeah, I was going to say, let's not push our luck. <laughs> Yo, that is true. So we shouldn't brag about it. We should Don't just brag keep about it. That's right. No, be humble in your wins. I, I right. respect okay. my opponent. Yeah. You have to. Be bro. humble in your wins. China might just be letting them win for now. <laughs> That's the long game, lets you get confident. Oh, is right. that Taiwan? What? That must be China. Nah, that, that I thought that was Vietnam bigger. to me. Oh, you could tell from this, those mountains. There are a lot of bays that have those type of mountains in Vietnam. We're yeah. talking about the picture behind us for those of us uh, listening. Right. How was your week, Hezzy? You just rocked Toronto, T. Dot to six. Man, that was unbelievable, bro. How was it? How many people? It was uh, 26,000. Wow. Yeah. As a stand up fucking comic. No cool, song, no bars, just jokes. Just jokes, man. 26,000 people. It was unbelievable, man. So much fucking. How fun. is that for you being a comic, man? Is, does this, do you still have the same level of intimacy with a 20 or the C? Or that was always my concern. Even? Yeah. That was always my concern going into it. I was like, can I still, can I still hold the attention? Can I still like create tension? and then have that release. And uh, we did a bunch of things to make sure that, that could happen. We spent a lot of money doing those things too. Like, oh, like screens? The screens. The, like they, that creates the intimacy for those people that are all the way upstairs in the back. We have them like angled at a certain way so that like everybody in the room can see you and all the energy is directing towards you. Like it's just a lot of things that we kind of did because that's the most important thing. Because you can do smaller venues, just do more shows. Yeah. And if the show suffered, then I would just rather do that because I want people to come out and have the best show. But the energy was great. Toronto, yo, thank you so much, man. That well, was sometimes you got to let people see your dick, man. You got to, yo, you hit you me. You were like, yo, I don't think you flexing this You enough. ain't stunting enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, ain't, you know what I'm saying? We had the like, video to post on I the said, I said, we're editing it, bro. Give us a second. <laughs> so, I mean, the flex is coming Monday. Only just because it's not even about... The flex, and I don't think there's a better flex than having people. Yo. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like you showing a wad of money. You ain't yep. showing no jewelry. It's the people. Like, you yep. got, for anybody who ever fronted on you, who said, oh, what you doing not going to work, or you're not funny, whatever, whatever, when you got 26,000 people coming to see you once. Bro, that's what the fucking Raptors yeah. play, bro. Yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, we did it. Yeah, we did it twice, man. We did it Friday and Saturday. Damn. It was, it was crazy. Damn. It's that, crazy. That, that's not been, hasn't been the biggest venue so far, though, right? No. But it's just like in perspective. Yeah, this is the biggest venue I've ever done. Yeah. But like to put things in perspective, it's like Drake is there this Friday, Saturday. And he has two shows. Damn. Now, I'm sure Drake can perform 100 shows in his, in his hometown, Toronto. He could do as much as he wants. But just the idea that we're in the same venue, in the same locker room. Yeah, yeah. And doing the same amount of show. Like, it's just so they cool. They gave you a jersey, bro. But that was fire, man. Yeah, to get the Raptors jersey. Come on, man. The Maple Leafs one. It was just, it was so cool, man. I wish you were up there, bro. I'll nah, be honest, man. I'm not stepping foot in Toronto. Are you crazy? Why, why? They coming for you? I don't know. I've been to Toronto before, though. Uh, yo, they love brilliant idiots out yeah, there. Yeah, they, they do, man. That's like love. one of the OG They love brilliant Barbara idiots. Graham out there, too. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> You get stopped at the border. That is, that is true. <laughs> Was brilliant idiots before Aubrey? Nah, about the same. Around the same. Around the same. same. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. fair enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was just so fucking cool, man. The energy from those people, like... The energy was just crazy. And you've been building up because you started doing comedy shows there. Of course. Man, 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 man. Wait, wait, you, you in Dubai at a big arena too, right? Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. So yeah, we're going to go. Right next, we go to Europe. So we got uh, Ireland, and then we got Scotland. We got Manchester, and then we got London, Amsterdam, and then we go to Abu Dhabi. And they got the UFC on Saturday, uh -huh. and then on Sunday, we're doing the... Same venue. The same venue. Like, that's another thing that's on, crazy, man. bro. It's Come like, on, man. Like, bro, when we're going to Australia, we're doing one of the venues, they do the Australian Open, the tennis thing. Come on, man. It's it's just crazy. It's, I still haven't even processed everything from it. Really? Yeah. So so you still feel like that guy doing the cellar in New York? Yeah, 100%. Like, I haven't processed, like, even in it, 
you know, you're thinking about it and you're like, what is, what is happening? You're looking at all the, like, but when we went in there earlier, you're looking at every empty seat and you're like, holy shit, this is all going to be full. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do it again. And it's like, yeah, my brain just couldn't accept it. It was the weirdest thing. I still feel like people, uh, people haven't fully grasped what you're doing. Oh, I realized what I am. What? I'm like a, a a Latin pop star in America. <laughs> <laughs> you know how like That's you know right. how like a Latin pop star will go like they'll like sell out a fucking stadium, yeah. but they'll be walking down the street and nobody know who they are. Yeah, you and never then, heard of, but they got 20 million Instagram followers. But then two people will see yeah. them on the street and go, "Holy shit!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then other people are like, "Who's that?" Like, so I think that's where I am in the ecosystem. But but they'll get it probably next year. If they do, well, they do. No, no, no. I'm but, grateful, but, bro. You know, like, I, I, I know, but I'm saying when I say when I say they'll get it next year is because next year is when you start hitting America. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna be and, fun. And that's when people act like, oh my God, can you believe this? Yeah, you cocksuckers. Did yeah. you not see what the fuck has been going yeah. on the past few years? Yeah. Man, probably. And everybody man. that did, you know, it was cool for them to be in that space as well as all these people hit me up, they're like, yo, I saw you in a club with a hundred people. And then they're there at this moment, and it's like, imagine being on that journey. Imagine telling your friends 10 years ago, like, yo, this guy's really funny, we should go see him. And everybody's, and all your friends are like, who is he? I don't know who he is. No, trust me, I'm telling you, this guy. And then you get to take those same friends to the fucking arena. Man. You know? I don't know. Just, Man. Just cool. I just be all. trying to figure out how you last an hour on stage with your bowels, bro. Like, how well, do you control your bowels <laughs> I wonder if it just shuts off. I think I don't think I've farted on stage before. I don't think I've... I definitely haven't stopped to go... Yeah, I think your brain is just locked What happened? Why is that? Like, how come... Like, I was just saying before... Flight. We, you, oh. It's fight or flight. That body checks in. Ooh. Hey, we got one job. Ooh. One job. I was saying before the pod started, how you get to a certain age, you can't hold nothing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you, you feel like you got to pee all the time. You feel like you got to shit all of the time. The only thing you don't have enough of is nut. Yo, it's facts, man. Yeah, it's facts. Hmm. That nut, bro. That you don't have a, you don't have a lot of that. Yeah. It's Everything like, else you feel like you got too much of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you fuck a lot? I mean, I'm satisfied. I'm a very satisfied <laughs> individual. Like, that's a no. I know. No, I'm that's sorry. A no, 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 no I'm, I'm, I know you're satisfied. No, I'm very right. satisfied because you don't need it all the it's, time. It's, you know, well, you know what's so crazy? Right How many now. times a week? <laughs> you know what's so crazy? Think about back in the day before we were married men. If you yeah, asked me a question. question. No, no, no I'm, I am going to answer. But if you asked me a question like that back in the day, and you goddamn right, I'm fucking all the time. But when it's when it's just you and your wife, when it's just your wife and you're a faithful man, you don't want to answer that shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, do you fuck a lot, Andrew? No. <laughs> well, get off the goddamn road, okay? Yeah. It's either it's either your wife or 26,000 people, all right, in an arena. Which one you want, man? Okay. I want my wife, man. Nah, but I think you just get older. You're like, all right, I don't need to do all this fucking. Well, you 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 understand love. I yeah. mean, what am I gonna hear from your 31 year old ass Taylor? Yeah. What's a lot though, T.O.? What's a lot? Oh man. Bro, if I'm fucking two times a week, that's no, no, that is more than enough. More than enough. How many times for you? Spiritual journey, so I'm not doing anything. How much hoeing was you doing that you had to go on a spiritual? Don't do that. I wasn't hoeing at all. I wasn't hoeing at all. It's not like nothing you, about you out there throwing it so much you gotta give it to God. No, I'm <laughs> no. I'm I didn't give it to everybody but God. Everybody done got it except for God. So now like, let me give it to God. No, I'm just protecting my energy more. Just around just friendship, everything else too. So to me, yeah. When I was probably like three times, I'm good. Oh, that's solid. Because if you got jobs and stuff, I mean, you got jobs and stuff. Three is more than enough. <laughs> that's, that's, that's. Three is, uh, yes. Three, I'm an addict. Yeah, three a week is kind of crazy. If I'm having sex three, what days? You already is What days? Charlotte. Three, Monday, how, Wednesday, how and much? Friday? Three a week kind of crazy. No, that's how crazy, much you? bro. You Why broke. is that crazy? If you have having sex three times a week, you poor. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, yo. We working, yo. Yeah, three a week kind of crazy, well, yo. I'm how in bed long by is 10. Y'all sessions? What do you mean how long is the session? Oh, my God. Because that's what matters, too. You're asking married men too many personal yeah. Until I yeah. nut. <laughs> okay, that's how long. Until, until I nut. You're until you both nut. Too many until personal No, hopefully they nut first. Until you but both. But when I nut, it's over. You fucking a lot, Alex? No. I'm like averaging probably 1.5. 
That's yo, good. Yeah, yeah. We're in love. Yo, it's up. 1.5. Yeah. Can I be honest with you? That's the real shit. 1.5 is fire. Yeah. What is the point five? Because some weeks you go two yeah, and you're like, two. I'm a fiend. <laughs> I'm a fiend yeah. right now. I'm a fiend, bro. I'm crazy. I'm horny, dick hard all the time. Two times. What a about week? masturbation though? Nah. <laughs> that I left that shit <laughs> in my twenties, bro. <laughs> I ain't <laughs> masturbating no more. Wait, Mas- you masturbating? Masturbating? You still jerking off? Yes. Just so you could get your steps in. <laughs> you don't masturbate with the Apple Watch? Nah. You do that Come shit on. to look at your heart rate? Watch your heart rate? Yeah. Man, slow down. Slow down. You don't do that? No. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't ever give up on the masturbation. Nah, don't, I don't, ever give, I don't, don't ever give up on that personal touch. Nah, I don't do that shit. Come I only on, jerk man. off on the road if they got the soap in the shower already. Nah, bro. Masturbating is like putting the screens up in the arena, man. <laughs> you have that level of intimacy with yourself, man. How you going to lose your small crowd? Yo, don't lose your small crowd mentality, yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. What you mean? I can't believe y'all don't masturbate. Y'all, only, man, only how she's often out of you town. jerk off? Not a lot. You know What's what I mean? that? What? How much? Yeah, definitely once a week at least. Wow, at least, man. Wow. Throw the mic to Chris. I know Chris can relate. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris, Chris, how many times you jerk off, man? Be honest. Well, I mean, my problem is I got a two bedroom apartment. There's not a lot of uh, <laughs> look at these excuses. Privacy. <laughs> look at these excuses. But that wasn't bro. what we asked. What? You still do it. Yeah, I'll sneak one in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's good, man. Relief stress is good, man. Can you hear your family doing things around you when you're doing? Oh no, 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 not, <laughs> not <laughs> like that's home. crazy. That's disgusting. Bro. Like, that's the, but that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like you know, you can't. Like you so, do? where do you find time to do it? You just lie and say you have COVID so you can stay home and get <laughs> all the fucking time. <laughs> nobody, nobody come in this room for two weeks. <laughs> 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 There's nothing wrong with it, man. Um, so you jerking off once a week in the car? No. <laughs> Where? Where? You got a lot of women in your house. Yeah, you got <laughs> like, four daughters, a wife. They're at school during the day. During the day is literally. You work during the day. No, I'm, I'm home by like noon. Oh. Damn, I'm home by like noon. I'm home so by- you just go home and spray down the house. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> this depends who it depends sometimes, man. I, th- I wanted to rub one out this week. I didn't get a chance to, though. Why not? Uh, I didn't have time. What inspired it? <laughs> I don't know. That's the crazy thing. You just be old with a hard dick for no reason. But that's how you know you're healthy. You know what I'm saying? Is that true? Absolutely. Like, my blood be going. Like, before bath, I still wake up with the Woody. No. Yeah, man. I wake up with I the Woody. I woke up with a boner this morning. I thought someone was wrong. Really? I called my heart doctor. <laughs> man, shut up. Man. I said, I think, it, I think it's over, bro. I think it's over, bro. Something's that was, happening, bro. That was one of the side effects of the cholesterol medication I was afraid of, uh, erectile dysfunction, but I don't have that problem. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's that. I'm t- you know what's so funny about the cholesterol medication? That's another way you know you get old. Like, you just be on the phone randomly with your peoples, and you find yourself going in CVS, and then you be like, somebody be like, what you picking up? Oh, I'm a cholesterol medicine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you just keep the conversation going like it's yeah. nothing. Everybody got to go pick their prescriptions up. Mm. What's your prescription, Chris? How many you got? Oh, my God. How many prescriptions <laughs> you got? Don't even get him started. Actually, bro. I went off all my stuff. I decided to clear the plate. Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Why? What's up, man? You hanging it up? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I, I don't know. I'm good. I don't need anything like that. I meant for the lime stuff. Oh, you just said, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went off all my supplements. Wait, you just gave my sister a bunch of advice of what to get. <laughs> so now <laughs> you put her It on. might work for my her. sister got Lyme disease? Yeah, she just found out now. She probably had this shit for probably 10 years. Oh, that shit no. probably be living dormant in you from Chris, yo. <laughs> Is that shit contagious? No. 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 Oh. Hey, don't worry like that. Damn. No. All right, uh, Taylor's game by any means. What's this shit, Taylor? By all, by all means necessary. This is where we go over a bunch of memes. I, they're really not memes, though. We're just, like, trending for the moment. Okay, trending for the moment. All right. It's uh, just the topic. Yo, this is, this is the part of the show where we do the thing we've been doing for fucking 10 years. <laughs> That's, That's the part it. of the show this is. Sometimes packaging is good. No, this yeah. is great packaging. Yeah. This is great packaging. This is great packaging. It's great packaging. Producer. It's, just, it's great. Just like when T.I. packaged trap music. There we go. It's just, okay, Jimmy Butler has who hair? 
Emo hair. What is emo hair? Nah, this story is, I mean, it was really funny, but who gives a fuck? I think Jimmy Butler is amazing He's because Jimmy Butler knows how to capture attention on media day. He did this last year with mm -hmm. the dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. He's doing it this year with the hair. I think Jimmy Butler is, is fantastic He's a man. for doing He's it. He's a man. Like, I love anybody in any sport who can be a showman. You know, because I think a lot of times uh, showmanship like this is regulated to like boxing, the UFC, because NBA players and football play players usually just go out there and just show an, you know, otherworldly level of skill. And that's enough for us. I like this. Who knows? Is yeah, that probably. his real hair? I just love that he don't I give a fuck what people hair. think about. Him. Nah, he don't. That's fire. And I loved after Damian Damian Lillard went to the Bucks, he got on the, uh, social media and said they need to be investigated for tampering. Who? <laughs> That's what Jimmy said about the Bucks. You didn't fire. see that snitching. That's I what love I'm it. saying. I love Jimmy, bro. He's he, the man. He's a guy. He should be a Nick, though. You don't think Jimmy Butler give Nick energy? I mean, we would fall in love with this guy. Yeah. This guy would get the key to the city. Yeah. It would be absolutely incredible. Salute to Jimmy. Uh, get to the big news, Taylor. There we go. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Swift. Out Still here. talking about her. Yeah. How many, how many, we were talking about this on Flagrant just okay. right now. How many, um, how many NBA games Beyonce went to and not one of them got shut down? <laughs> Damn. I'm just saying, how many? I mean, Beyonce's at the NBA games. They're like, yo, that's Jay Z's wife. This girl right here is shutting that's down football games. Yo. Now listen, is, is, is it because the NBA isn't as big as the NFL, or is it because nobody's as big as Taylor? Damn, I'm just saying. Well, I'm a the listen. attention she's getting for just showing up to a game is crazy. If we're being, if we're being honest, which I feel like brilliant idiots is, you should believe us when we're lying. I feel like. Yeah, this is a different. This is an OG level of superstardom that Taylor Swift has. It's this is ninety pre-internet yeah, yeah, superstardom, yeah, yo. This ninety super. It is. It is. This is ninety celebrity. It is. It really is. Like I don't know. I don't. I don't know what happened. How about this? I'll give y'all something. Let's say hypothetically, I don't believe this. Let's say Taylor is worse than Beyonce and all things blah blah blah, but more people are obsessed with her than any other person on the planet right now. Right now. So she might not moment. be as talented, might not be all those things. Give that to Beyonce, because I hate the fact that we always got to compare, even though I start that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, let's, let's just have this conversation. More people are obsessed with her than anybody else on the planet right now in this moment. I Can agree. we just say that? I, I agree. Pope? Who? Pope. Exactly, who? The Pope? The Pope? Are you trying to think? Poke yeah. this dick in your mouth! <laughs> Yo, yo. yo, did we just alley oop you? Yo. yo, did me and Chris just alley oop you? Yo. And you hit a who that was crazy, Listen, bro. Man, the who you hit was like this. Give me that fucking camera out. You went, who? <laughs> yo. That was crazy. Man, yesterday I was in Atlanta, man. They tried to catch you? Listen. Yeah. Listen, they man. Tried to That's why you left the, the BET. I was at the BET Hip Hop Awards. Different type of catch. That is, Listen, you know, you're very careful. I was walking the green carpet. I cannot remember the guy. Guy's name, man. He works. He was. He was doing interviews for Hip Hop DX. White dude. I'm so sorry. I can't remember your name because he's a super brilliant idiot fan. And like they were towards the end of the carpet, and so they was kind of rushing me, right? So I was already kind of like done with doing in interviews. And he was just. He said, "Man, I just want to say what's up and take a picture, man." And he was like, "I said, I said, oh, what's up, man?" He was like, "He was like, I don't really feel like doing more interviews." He was like, "It's all good." He was like, "I love brilliant idiots, blah, 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 this and that." He said, "Man, I'm glad to see you here, man. Celebrating 50 years of hip hop." I said, "Yeah, man, it's dope." He said, "You know." What do you think of Atlanta's role in hip hop? We just talking. He's like, dope. He said, yo, you heard of that new rapper, um, uh, 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 MC Toppinoff? <laughs> and I, I, I'm looking, right? And I'm like, you almost fucking got me. You almost fucking got me. Yo, I laughed. I laughed so hard I had to do an interview with him, yo. I was like, yo, come on, man. We got to do an interview. Because he almost got, like, he had me right there. Because he let it in with just regular conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. asking about hip hop. And he was like, yo, and you know, in Atlanta, there's always a new fucking rapper popping up. What do you mean you left? Well, you know, Breakfast Club comes on BET every morning yeah. at 9 a.m. And, um, you know, they, they want us to make appearances of at their award shows and stuff. Not a problem. Um, so they was like, yo, we would love for you all to come to the BET Hip Hop Awards. We were uh, going to present 
with uh with Fat Joe because Fat Joe hosts, so we were gonna do something on stage with Fat Joe, um, and so yeah, I, me being the professional I am, you know, I I got there when I was supposed to be there. Dress rehearsal was supposed to start at twelve, didn't start till two. Uh, red carpet was supposed to start at four. That actually did start on time. And I was there the whole time. I was there from like 12 to 747. Cause 747 clearly said on the paper, hard out, got a flight to catch, get back to New York, already missed a day of work, you know, uh, you know, missed a day at Breakfast Club flying down there. And so at wow. wow. So at seven o'clock, <laughs> at seven o'clock, come on, it's just a fart. Don't act like you never heard of fart before, guys. You're acting like guys when they see a titty. Uh at seven o'clock, <laughs> um, it was supposed to start at seven. Didn't yeah. start until seven, like 15, 7, 20. Uh, the baby opened the show. The baby opened the show, but the baby had to do his performance twice because they, they fucked messed it up. up something. Yeah. No, in front of the whole crowd? Well, I'm going to tell you the crazy part. The baby was doing rehearsals. I was watching the baby rehearse. The baby's doing rehearsals. The baby literally says to them, hey, the curtain went up too fast. I didn't get the opportunity to change. I'm not gonna give away his performance, but you'll see when he, when it comes on uh, next week, you'll see what I mean. He performs like a little medley of songs, yeah. right? But there's people who come out, you know, during his set, and um, he does a, he does an outfit change. But he told him in rehearsals it went up too fast. I didn't get an opportunity to change. Let's do it over. And somebody was just like, "Oh, don't worry about it." Like, you know what I mean? So, uh, okay. Long story short, two o'clock. Rehearsal start. We're waiting to rehearse. Envy gets fed up. He leaves, right? I'm still there. Stage manager comes. Stage manager's like, hey, okay, it's time for y'all to rehearse. Soon as soon as Envy leaves, I'm like, oh, when Envy left. And then they're like, oh, you look at the paper and they go, oh, well, y'all are just ad-libbing anyway. Don't worry about it. We do it in the show, right? <laughs> so, 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 all right, cool. But we never even got to do it in the show because I told them, hey, guys, I just want y'all to know my heart out is 747, all right? I'm leaving regardless. So I left regardless. Mm. Now, this is awesome. Why? Did you, hold on, hold on. Did you, okay, so Envy left immediately. Usually, no, no, Envy left to go change because he wasn't, remember this is dress rehearsals. Mm -hmm. So we were supposed to rehearse at 12. Rehearsals didn't start till two. Red carpet was four. So Envy left to go change. Because we had been waiting for a so couple So you never of got the chance to rehearse? Never got the chance to rehearse. And then did you get the chance to shoot whatever you need to shoot? No, because we were shooting in the show. So uh, we were supposed to go on stage around 740-something, yeah. you know, that do our part and then be out for the airport. Like, it literally said on the schedule, we have a hard out. Because there's probably one more flight coming back from... That's right. I am not. I can't stay in Atlanta overnight. I got a life. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, Why simple as that. Pre-recorded. Alex, I don't know. Like, That's what I mean. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's pre-taped. Pre hey, man. Now, did you feel like something like this was going to happen? Absolutely. Okay. That's just, I, I, because usually when people are frustrated by a thing, they have this premeditated con uh, con uh, what, conception of that thing. Yeah. And then it happens, and then it's like, why did I even put up with this shit? Here's the thing. I, I expected it to happen. I kind of knew it was going to happen. And why? 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 Why did you Shut have up. that? Shut up. Leave me alone. All right? <laughs> 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 right? Okay. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Shut I, up. I, leave, leave me alone is fucking hysterical. I, Shut up. Leave me alone. I just knew it was going to happen. But what, what about it? <laughs> like, why did you feel that? Like, what was your, what, what about it? Just like, experience. We've been, listen, we've been with Paramount and Viacom for a long time. Yep. Yeah, we've yeah. done a lot. We've done a lot of these things. You yeah. know, we've done everything from the MTV Awards, MTV Movie Awards. Was there a chance that you weren't going to go? Was there like this part of you in your brand? You were like, ugh, sometimes. I never want to go. Yes. So here's that's the other thing that that's people- That's why you were annoyed. But I, I wasn't annoyed though. And you know why I wasn't annoyed? Why? Because I knew that I control my own destiny in this <laughs> Meaning situation. Meaning you were leaving the simple. I'm leaving. I told, and everybody knew days in advance. Yeah. This is what it is. It says right here, 747. I don't know if y'all think I'm not going to leave at 747 because there's other people there. 
that were like, you know, hey, I'm going to leave. If y'all don't push up the show, I got to get out of here, yada, yada, yada. So other people also had this feeling about the show. It's almost like there was a sentiment going into the show from the people that were associated. Hey with man, it. the show yeah. didn't end until like eleven o'clock at night, from what I was told. Is that right? I don't. I wouldn't know because I was gone. And when I left, I told. I started picking, pick, packing up my stuff at seven forty-four, and I. I told Envy, I said, yo, I'm out. He said, but you said 747. You got three minutes. I said, by the time I get to the car, it'll be 747. They'll be coming in here saying, hey, we about to go right now. <laughs> we about to tape y'all right now. We're going to tape out the order. I said, I guarantee it. By the time I got to my car, Envy texted me like, yo, they just came in the room and said to tape. they want to take us right now. I said, enjoy. <laughs> and I went to the airport. I don't listen, man. I'm old. I'm grown. Did, they, did he go do it? Without you? No. He left like 15 minutes after me. So they didn't even go tape? No. When they came into the room to tell them we're about to go tape, they were lying? No, because they had to move. Because it was a lot going on. It was a lot of moving parts. You had a lot of different people, I guess, in the moment was frustrated. They had performances. They had to get in, things like that. You, I'm How not many tripping. people do you think uh, it wasn't on time for, if, if you could... Yeah, the whole show. It was they literally was the whole show was like at least 40 minutes behind. But listen, once again, I'm not even upset. Like, you know, we got the I flew down to Atlanta. I didn't know Duval was gonna be there. It was good seeing Duval. Aww. I didn't know uh Pretty Go. V was gonna be there. I didn't know V was gonna be there. It was good seeing V. It was just cool. It was just a cool little thing. It's just like I don't look at I don't look at that as a waste of a day. Cause I feel like wherever we are, uh where, wherever we are, we're supposed to be there at the time we're supposed to be there. You did. Okay, you did the right thing, mm -hmm. but you also created a boundary where your, I don't want to say it's kindness or generosity, because it's still an honor to be part of something like this. Absolutely. That like, you know, we grew up watching and it's just such a, like a mainstay in culture. But you, if you didn't go, you'd probably feel guilty. You're like, you know what? I'm at a point where I should- I'm not being a good partner. I'm not being a good partner. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, you have a boundary to being a good partner. Absolutely. Because once they extend your time, now they're not going to be in a good partner. Absolutely. And so, that's, I, that's I, so I think that like, now I have a suspicion that you literally went down there and you went, there's no way I'm going to end up filming this fucking thing. That is my suspicion. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you <laughs> went there. If you really think about it, you went there. To prove a point. <laughs> <laughs> God damn! <laughs> the proof of point. Uh, I was I was actually going to give you all benefit of the doubt, but I like the way no, you the went with point. it. I'm a professional. I'm going to always be professional. And I'm going to hold you down. That's right. If y'all need me for anything, right. if the culture right. needs me for anything, I'm there 100%. That's right. I was there from 12 noon to 7.47. Exactly. But one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be taken advantage of. No, no, none of us should allow anybody to take advantage of I think of that's us. a very reasonable thing. You know what you should ask? You should just ask us to spend the day and the, the, spend the night. Well, and I maybe, can't. maybe you would say no, yeah, I, but at least set that. that expectation. That's right. I'm I not, think that's fair. I'm not able to do that. I'm personally not able to do that. I, now, could I have made some arrangements if that conversation was had? Sure. And I, sus I suspect you would have done it because yes. you want to do the right thing right. for especially the black entertainment television that's right. show. That's right. Right? Like, that's right. But but if we have if we have come to an agreement and that agreement is, hey, this is what they're doing. They're flying in. This is what they this one they need to tape. They're out. Now, what if people go, oh, you would have waited around for the Emmys? I wouldn't have. That's they don't know me. That's <laughs> they don't talking. know. They don't know that's me. What the fuck they I'm don't know about. me. That's I don't real. I don't yeah. even like to go. All I need is a reason because I don't want to be to be there anyway. I was surprised. I've never seen you at a war show. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, all of them know. You know. I will. I'm out. Like it's nothing. It's uh, cool. Uh, I'm yeah. fine with that. I'm either. I'm not. I'm either not going, or if I'm there, give me a fucking reason. Though. I don't know if we've made it to the end of one award show. The end. Yeah. And that was back in the day when we, you know what? Yeah, that was back in, why did we go to those award shows? Because they was paying. Yeah, they used, to, they used to have us walking the red carpets and sitting in the audience. Fun, like you get to see these things that you watch on TV growing up. It was really cool to be there. But you know what though, even back then, and it's no, it's no knock to uh, you know MTV or the MTV system, because you know we got plenty of love. They showed us mad love. They never let us present or anything. 
No, they didn't have. Yeah, a none, none of the cast of Guy Code ever presented any awards or anything like that. It never was like, please welcome no. the cast of Guy Code. And you know what's weird is that we would be getting love too. Yes, or, hell like yeah. out when we were doing the carpet or that kind Absolutely. of. Absolutely, but also at that, that time, like, yeah, you were getting crazy love because there were people that knew you from Breakfast Club and knew you from MTV. Yeah, but this is when the code shows were popping. Yes. They could have did that. Please welcome the cast really of Guy Cole. What, I don't think they really knew what they had. Think about think think about all the times we sat at those award shows and heard. Please welcome the cast of Teen Mom. Yeah. Please welcome the cast Yo, of fact. Thirteen and Pregnant. No, you know you what know it was. What I mean? There was this beef between MTV and MTV Two. Two, yeah, that's how, that's yeah. what it was. Um, and the MTV people were like the big execs. They were upset that this MTV Two show yeah. not only was popping, but poppin'. it was so popping that they created. Girl Code for, for MTV. MTV. Yeah. And there was this animosity. They didn't want to share talent. They didn't want MTV2 show to thrive. So to, to give it like the fucking center stage at the award show. I don't even remember the Girl Code girls presenting no awards. They didn't? Yeah. That's crazy when you think about it in hindsight. All that ego just... Well, salute to MTV and Paramount and everybody over there. Uh, you are appreciated. How Thank did we you. get here? I thought you were about to talk about Travis Kelsey and Taylor fucking Swift. Mm. <laughs> that is crazy. How we went from the whitest of the white to the BET Hip Hop Awards. I mean, no, we talked about Travis Kelsey, and then from there, you clearly go to the BET Hip Hop Awards. <laughs> 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 Yo, is Travis not invited to the cookout no more? I don't know. What did Travis say? What did he say? Black it's women not fucking with him anymore, huh? And his accent changed a little bit. Yeah. You noticed that? Accent yeah, changed a little bit. No, it, it has. It accent has. changed a little bit. Accent? Even he noticed it. I picked it up. I was like, what's this honky talking about now? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are you talking like a real honky? <laughs> Who's this, this crack honky? ass cracker talking about? <laughs> Who's this Back honky? Back in the day. I'm bro, telling you, everything changed. What did I kind of say, yo? He was yes, yes, y'all in? Nah, back in the day, he said, uh, he goes, uh, he goes, they don't know, they, they ain't no nan. Nan, no, nan they, nothing. Nan. They don't know nan nothing about uh, whatever. Like, <laughs> he said some black shit. I ain't even know black people said. Like, that's how black that shit got, bro. <laughs> what he said, Tree recorded Trick Daddy? I don't know. But, but now. You know he used to talk a little. I never used to hear him. This is the, I didn't even know Travis Kelsey had a podcast. That podcast fire him and his brother. I didn't know. That's fire, bro. I didn't. I didn't. I, all I knew was Travis Kelsey was cut, catching touchdowns for the Kansas City Chiefs, Damn. two-time Super Bowl champion. That's but you didn't know that's a Taylor Swift effect right there. Podcast, bro. You got, <laughs> that's a Taylor Swift. No, you ain't know Listen, nothing about and, and nothing. By the way, I was, so, I was so Taylor Swift effect. We didn't know nan nah. nothing about Travis so. Kelsey. Now we know he got a podcast. I was so, and I told, I said this shit two weeks ago on this podcast. I said, "What'd you say?" I said that it pisses me <laughs> off that what? there's women in my life who all of a sudden are acting. Like the goddamn NFL is the most popping shit in the world because of Taylor Swift. One of them dang actually dang told me verbatim dang the dang NFL dang. is popping. Why is the NFL Can popping? Can I tell you something? And they said because of Taylor goddamn Swift. NFL is popping right now. Yo, ain't 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 no nan person said. <laughs> that, hold on, ain't no nan person said anything about no nan concussions. There ain't been nan none concussions since he started hey, Taylor, Taylor that Swift. That is true. I Taylor Swift stopped concussion. concussions, yo. <laughs> Taylor Dang. Swift does stop concussions. <laughs> Not there ain't been a nan concussion in, in in literally two weeks. You ain't stop Achilles. Nah, <laughs> the, the, you ain't stop Achilles. No, it's a lot of. Achilles, a lot of Achilles. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something that Andrew Schultz but just did. But what is black men's you know Achilles heel? White women. White women. That's Yo. all I'm saying, bro. Y'all know nan nothing. You know what you just did? What I did? You just guaranteed Travis Kelsey a concussion. Yep, he <laughs> did. I guarantee you, before the season is over, Travis Kelsey is gonna get Yo, a concussion. Yo, what if he gets it because he wakes up? He goes. Damn, yo. <laughs> Where the bitch is that? Where the bitch is that? Yo, what if somebody knocks some Man, swag be funny back as hell. in? You, wake, you get a concussion and wake up black. Yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 where the hoes at? Yo, man? no homo, what happened to me, yo? No, no homo. Who hit me from the back? Pause. Me, <laughs> Come on, let's go to Waffle House. Okay, man. this shit says Travis Kelsey feels like the NFL is overdoing it with the Taylor Swift coverage. Let me hear this gospel he about to preach. God damn, Alex, you let one rip too? No, that was the, that was. A oh, no. that's crazy that you fucked up again, yo. It's kind of crazy, Taylor. I'm not it is. Crazy, That's like, kind of crazy. Like, I guess hey, it's can screaming, we, can we, Taylor. 
Can we do a segment where you do your fucking job right? <laughs> Come on, man. What Taylor, is wrong with Taylor you, Taylor? Made it. You know what's so crazy about this? Taylor had that shit sat sitting up there for five years. Yo, minutes. we need to put we, the Taylor made it right she, after she fucked she, up. Right, yeah. She bought it up, right? Not only did she bring it up, she bought it up, then we started having a whole other conversation about something else, and she still don't got it. Why do you hate us? Because y'all you... literally see what's going on. It's not me. All I, I see is you Twitter. hating on a on a on a beautiful white man. You're using... dating a beautiful white woman, and that's why you won't let him talk and explain himself. And you're using Twitter as a search engine again. Oh God. There we go. Okay, bring it back, Taylor. There you go. Is the NFL overdoing it? What is your honest opinion? Not I think, take away, I think everybody's take away just like overwhelmed. Your feelings with, for Taylor. What is your honest <laughs> opinion on how the NFL is treating uh, celebrities at games? That's his brother. It's fun when they show uh, who all is at the game. You know, I think uh, I think it brings a little bit more to the atmosphere. Brings a little bit more to to what you're watching. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, they're overdoing it. They're they're overdoing it a little bit. For sure, especially my situation. Right. I think they're they're just trying to have fun with it. And um a lot Here's of uh, a lot of the people watching, go ahead. Let's hear it. I just think the NFL is not used to celebrities coming to the games. Like basketball has to figure it out. They're all courtside, they're sitting there, they show them once or twice, and then That's and then they point. but they get back to the game. The NFL is like, oh, look at all these A-list celebrities in the game. Keep showing them, show them, show them, show them. Dude, listen. You show them once, let them know they're there. Maybe after a touchdown, you get a little clip, but it can't, it can't be over. You keep it. showing you know them because we're talking about it. It's all over Twitter. It's all over everything. You have a cam on her every single day. You literally have the most famous female performer of all time yeah. at the at the game. Like, why would you not have a cam on her? Why does his brother look like he want to be in the new reboot of Duck Dynasty? <laughs> <laughs> how are you talking about how good his podcast is and you're now saying his brother for the very first time? I said his I podcast said was, was good. good. I never said his podcast was I good. I thought he said, no, no he said I, said it I never good. even heard his podcast till now. I didn't say it was good. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So tell, yeah, you called him out. You said you didn't hear until now. That's true. But I thought he's seen it. No. He's just seen it for the first time. No. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I never thought about that. Celebrities at the football games. That's what I'm saying. It's like at basketball games, we see them, they're on but nah, you know, courtside. courtside. This ain't the first. Kim Kardashian used to go to Saints games all the time with Reggie Bush. Yeah, but think about it. They're in the suites. So was Taylor. Yeah, I Taylor's guess. Taylor's in the suite. Man, I, I see, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I, I can't think of no huge celebrities I've seen at football game. Well, no, the Super Bowl. It's always mad celebrities at the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's different. A lot of times when celebs at games, they're kind of like on the sidelines. You see that a little bit. Yeah. But nah, like just chilling and watching the game. This is new. Taylor's changed the NFL. And she's brought some celebrity to it. This is an obvious thing. I bet you the NBA is going to start doing that. Doing what? Now just focus more on the celebrities that are at games and how they're doing during the game. I think this is just proving how white the NFL is, even though we all love the NFL, because Taylor Swift has gone to basketball games before and don't nobody care. Clearly. That's what I'm saying. NBA didn't focus on the celebrities that were there. I think the NBA is going to probably start focusing on the celebrities. The NBA does, though. The NBA does the cam. Whoever's sitting courtside at the game, they do the cam, and they be like, Beyonce and Jay-Z are and that's, here, that's Usher's here. At, that's when you're at the game, but what they show on TV, you don't see that. Yes, they do. No, they we just don't. have a moment Hell where yeah. we just shout out white people, bro. <clears throat> oh shut up. They do, they do that all the time on TV. They cut to Taylor more How do you think we know they're there, that, though? No, but they cut to Taylor more times during that game than some of the players. That's the difference. They kept cutting to Taylor during that entire game. This guy is crazy. <laughs> what I did? What did you eat, bro? Huh? What did you I eat? I told you when you get to a certain age, you can't keep shit in. <laughs> I can't. This just is what it is. I'm just, this is the, this is the brilliant idiot's golden years. I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> I'm just sitting here getting ready for all of this shit. Like, I already know what's going to happen. Bro. Bro. This shit is going to be like this for a while. Like, this, <laughs> to the end. <laughs> to the end. I'm trying to tell to you. To the end. I'm trying to fucking tell you, What man. else we got, Taylor? Well, Paris has an infestation of bed bugs, yo. Oh, no. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, no. It's fucking crazy. Oh, shit, Taylor. It's, fucking it's a crazy. light week, huh? Very light week, Taylor. We're not going to talk, talk about Britney Spears. And, with, and, and, and what's crazy, we we, we shooting hibachi? this on a Wednesday at 5 o'clock, and that's what Taylor's, Taylor's hit us with. Paris has Paris an inflation has of bed bugs. No. Why do we care about it? I mean, Paris is a beautiful city. It's absolutely stunning, but... You know, I'm not surprised that they have bed bugs there. They're not exempt from bed bugs. Yeah. They don't even wash there that much, right? 
They don't. Yeah. Not a cultural uh, mainstay. Mm. Oh. That's why they develop perfume. <laughs> that is something crazy. I'm being 100% about. serious. No, no, no. Like the Somebody was fed that, the fuck up. Dead ass. Yeah, the cultures made, yeah, yeah, that yeah, develop yeah, yeah. perfume is to cover up horrible yeah, scents because yeah. they didn't bathe. They were afraid of water. Water would kill you in a lot of times back in the day. But if you look at like um, Turkish culture, right? Like they only fuck with moving water because you could trust the moving water because yeah. the flow meant that it's not going to keep all this horrible bacteria. It's not going to just sit there. So in Turkey, they don't need fucking perfume back in the day because they smell good. Yo, who, the Ottoman Empire was smelling good, bro. Yo, whoever made perfume, stink. whoever created toothpaste, whoever stink. created deodorant, they was either stink or fed the fuck fed up, up at bro. the way somebody smelled. Can't do it. They was Can't tired no of that shit. They was walking around like, man, I am tired of You know why the Three Musketeers wore them big ass hats? Who? Why? You know the, the hats I'm talking about? Yeah. Like this? is because motherfuckers, there was no bathroom, so they would just dump the pee out the side of the windows yeah. and dump the shit out the side of the window so you might get caught in your fucking head with shit or pee, so you wore that hat to block it. Shut the fuck Look up. it up right now. I did hear something Taylor, like start that, Start looking though. it up right now so we can have it by episode it, it, three weeks. <laughs> is that why they say the three musketeer candy bar looks like a piece of doo-doo? Absolutely. Because when you even, when you open it up, it still, it looks, it's got like that soft nougie chocolate shit inside. Yeah. Yeah, so it's supposed to look like a piece of doodle. Like if you break a piece of doodle open. Yes. Like the, the doodle has a color on the outside, but when you break it open, it looks like a different shade of brown on the 100%. inside. You can tell how old the meal is. Yeah, yeah. By how yeah. many rings. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Y'all didn't know the Three Musketeers <laughs> bar looked like a piece of shit on purpose, We did do you? know. But Taylor, can, um, did you find out my thing? Why did most European armies in the colonial age... What did you type oh, in, Taylor? Uh, wear hats. She put, why did the Three Musketeers... Son, son, I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. Click that, click that, click that, Taylor. What hats did the Three Musketeers wear? Taylor, the best. Taylor, you're the best. <laughs> the best. Wide brim yeah. hats worn by the Cavaliers in England and the Musketeers in France in the 1600s were impressive but not very practical. The droopy brims were a hazard for horse, horse riding and sword fighting and eventually the brims were turned up or cocked on one or more sides. So that they could stop the shit. They were getting shit in on? Telling you, throw the shit right out the side of the buildings. Damn. So it's like an umbrella. Exactly. And... 100%. Okay. What Taylor, else we got, Taylor? Come on, Taylor. Yo, man, Brittany got investigated. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. They sent people to her house after they that should. nice video, man. This chick is crazy. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course. <laughs> but if, yes. If you saw one of your friends dancing with the knives like her, you would have done the same shit. Man, yo, that shit was crazy. They literally sent people. Dude, they really did. You didn't know that? No. Pull it up, Taylor. God, Taylor, please, man, you have to stop. But she don't got no kids in the house, so it's like. He said she cut herself. But she don't got kids in the house, so it's like. She's still a danger, a danger to herself. She's an absolute fucking loony bin. <laughs> man, stop, man. We need, a, <laughs> yo, we need to have a documentary done on her man, the guy who just broke up with her. Because I need to know how he was with this girl for five years, bro. They were together for years. They were married. Damn, he, he probably had to sign a crazy NDA. 100%. And not talk. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. There's another celebrity I know that people always historically talk about like that. Like, they say that she's completely off her rocker, like, in every single way. Like, Can we believe it? Say it and believe it? I, I thought you were talking about Tyrese, but can you keep No, no, no. This is a woman. Like, like completely off her. Who? You going to believe it? Yeah. Believe <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I heard that, but I heard not 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 like this other one. Okay, say it and bleep it. Oh yeah, yeah that yeah, one. We yeah, know. Really? Yeah. yeah, but not crazy. No, like they that. say she's off, off. Like no, worse. Like, like that's why you don't see her. Like they keep the cameras away from her. Like that type of stuff. Like, but that's what I realized. A lot of these fucking like managers and agents, bro, they're just fucking riding the cash cow until it breaks, crashes, and they move on to someone else. They're like, how do we keep them alive? How do we keep them going to shows? How do we keep them getting the next check? Because that's how we get paid. Just think about it. When have you seen her? You don't see her, never. bro. Never. You don't never yeah. see her in the news. I mean, you, ever. You, you literally see her once a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't even see her. Yeah, you know, but you hear it. I think we might have gave too much away. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep when we see her. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, Britney Spears went off on cops Saturday demanding an apology after they came to her house a few days back to do a welfare check. As you know, Brit was dancing with knives Monday and it looked what? What is that word? 
Perilous. She said they were prop knives, but fans weren't buying it after she posted another video a day later with a bandage on her arm and a cut on her leg. She was just getting ready for Halloween, man. <laughs> That's all. Look at her. You know, she got the makeup on her eyes. You know what I'm saying? Looking like that shit that climbed out of that well. And uh, what's the name of that? Does you need like her makeup the ring. all the, the time. Ring? Yeah. She, it does look like the ring, bro. Yeah, it looked like the ring got a little sun. That's all. So, so she's been getting ready for Halloween. Getting ready for Halloween for years that's now because that's how her makeup that's always. That's it. Is. Listen, nah, you can't be mad because they sent the welfare check, Brittany. You know what I mean? That's just people being concerned. You are gonna shit yourself? That one you forced. I didn't fart. You didn't? Oh, who did that, Taylor? Taylor, you did fart. No, I didn't. You sure? Yes. Girls from Philly are known to fart. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we would have. Do you have big? We do you have bad gas, out. Taylor? Be honest. Don't do that. You went for this whole time. Come on, man. Uh, uh, Don't uh, jump. Uh, just listen. asking, do a, you have bad A diet cats? of Philly cheese steaks with that cheese sauce on it, the pretzels with the cheese sauce on it, fucking tasty cakes. I feel of like you would have horrible she gas. Has bad clear, gas. I, first of all, you act like I go get a cheese steak every day. I'm not you even do. in I'm not right. in Philly. You do. I only get Philly cheese steaks you, in Philly. You I'm drive not home to get them. No, I don't. You told me you drive no, the Isker no, Bibbles on weekends to get them. You say you love Max's. Don't lie, Taylor. Max's is disgusting. That's disrespectful. Which one you say you like? Ishka Bibbles. Ishka Bibbles. Ishka Bibbles. Yeah. When, how, when the last time you went? Year. Oh, uh, not years, but months, months, months. She's lying. How long will you wipe for when you take a fat shit? <laughs> <laughs> what? How long will you wipe for when you how take a super fat shit? Yeah. I keep wiping until I see no more. God damn. How many times you got to wipe? You say you keep wiping. <laughs> Yo, what? You know, that shit is crazy. Because if somebody swipes your credit card more than twice, yeah, that's you think kinda, something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why are you okay swiping that many times? I just, I, keep, make sure I just clean? keep wiping? Yo, you, you need a colonic, yo. That's crazy. <laughs> how? But how long will well, you do it? Why are you trying to divert the conversation to Does, me? Do you yo. ever break through the toilet paper and finger your asshole by accident? God damn. No. You've never done that? No, I never broke through. No. <laughs> I'm the crazy. only person that's ever that, done that? That's good. <laughs> yeah, At least you got that I two-ply. Sure, she got yeah. the two-ply. I mean, I do have the two-ply. And I, I have don't white. Know. If you break it through the two-ply, that's different. I've been thinking Sometimes about that. It, it like, it like but balls you don't use up, just like wipes. rolls up and then breaks through. You don't have dude wipes? Say what? You don't have dude wipes? Oh, I don't do those. You got up in the bathroom right there. Yeah, I just don't do them. Oh. Because <laughs> I like to feel the traction. It's just damn. wet on wet. Gay. You know, no, I don't want that wet God on wet. damn. Shit. He said he liked to feel the traction. Man, just go get uh, fucked already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. What else we got, Taylor? You want to go to an ad? Michael Jordan's net worth is $3 billion now. Uh, not a surprise. Nobody's surprised by that, right? No, no. Oh, I know what I want to talk about. Let's play some ads, and we come back and we talk about um, uh, Jay-Z and whether or not you should give family members and friends money. You have oh. that clip, Taylor? So, Taylor, Taylor we're going to do it. We're going to do two ads. Shut up. So, we're giving you... And, I hate so, check you. it out. We're going to give you really two ads you. and I church hate announcements. I hate you. Let's see if Taylor will have you. the Jay-Z clip ready not to possible. go. By the time we come out of two ads Not in possible. church announcements. Not possible. Uh, salute to Hero Bread, man. Hero Bread, thank you so much for being a sponsor of the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Hero makes sliced breads, buns, and tortillas that are available on Hero.co and Amazon. Hero has fewer calories than the leading national brand with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. It's soft, fluffy, and delicious, but it's also high in fiber with ultra-low net carbs and zero grams of sugar per slice. Right now, Hero Bread is offering our listeners 10% off their first order. Just go to Hero.co and use our code IDIOTS to save on Hero Bread today. That's H-E-R-O dot C O to save 10% today. All right? Want to do prize pick shows? Guys, this episode has also been brought to you by Prize Picks. Get into the prize picks. This is how simple it is, okay? You pick two or more players. It could be across any teams. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be football, basketball. It could be a combination. You do one football, one ba basketball. They're going to give you the lines, and then you just choose a more or less, okay? That is the game. You think Travis Kelsey is going to score more than one touchdown this week? Actually, you've got to check out the line on Travis specifically. Let's see if it's moved at all. But last week... I had Travis with more than 0.5 touchdowns. Did he get it? 
not here and do it. And that could be a Taylor Swift effect. But I'm point, the point that I'm trying to make is you can choose across all the sports. They present you all the lines. All you got to choose is at least two. Run it up to like 10. You win 20. You could win, honestly, 25 times your money. You could probably even win more than that. Point is, Prize Pick is offering the weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts. Okay, they got Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25%. Think about that. Okay, so you're getting even more value when you win on those picks. And this is what you're going to do right now. If you go to prizepicks.com slash idiots and use the code idiots for the first deposit, they're going to match it up to $100. That means you put in $100 on that first deposit, they're going to add another $100 to it, and then you could get busy on there. Okay, that is prizepicks.com slash idiots and the code idiots for the first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made Easy. Bye. Now let's get back to the show. You got any church announcements, Schultz? Church announcements, yo. Thank you so much, everybody in uh, Toronto that came out, man. So grateful. Um, we're going out to Europe next, the life tour. It's going hey. to Europe next. Uh, so we'll be out there in Ireland, Manchester. We had another show in Manchester, um, Amsterdam, um, London, and then we go out to Abu Dhabi. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see you guys. You got, got tickets to those shows already out there. And, uh, and then after that, we're going to Australia. So stoked about all that, man. Thank you guys so much. Schultz is in these streets. Uh, I want to tell everybody thank you um, for pre-ordering Invisible Generals by my man Doug Melville. That is the next release off Black Privilege Publishing. My book imprint with Simon & Schuster tells the amazing true story of America's first black generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen. So make sure you go pre-order that. It is available November 7th, but it's available for pre-order right now. Uh, salute to the good sister. To Alicia Renee. Make sure you check out Unleash for Love on Audible. That is available right now. It stars Alicia Renee and Pretty V and uh, Logan Browning and Kadeem Hardison and Jasmine Guy. Just hilarious. It's just a great story about uh, it's an audio. It's an audio scripted romantic comedy. So if you love a good rom com, that is for you. And I just want to make sure to tell everybody this Saturday. My third annual Mental Wealth Expo is happening at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square, New York City from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. It is a day of mental health and healing education in honor of World Mental Health Day. I bring together some of the best therapists and psychiatrists and mental health uh, experts as well as mental health advocates, Dr. Alfie Breland Noble, Dr. Rita Walker, Michelle Williams, Dr. Jay Barnett, Tamika Mallory, Brandon Marshall, Angela Rye, my man Shaka Singh Kaur, Corey Minor Smith, Elliot Connie, uh, Renshawn Miller, Justin Little, Resma Minicum, uh, Latham Thomas. This is just, uh, I got Sleepy Hollow performance. Sleepy Hollow has this great song called Anxiety that I really love with Dochi. And I was, Nyla played it one Friday during Pastor Ox. And I was just like, yo, that's dope. He should come do that at the Mental Wealth Expo. And he was like, I would absolutely love come do it at the Mental Wealth Expo. So he'll be performing. Uh, Styles P will be there. Just, you know, a lot of different people who care about the cause of mental health. So go to mentalwealthexpo.com for more information to register. And keep in mind, it is a free event. Because I feel like when you're providing uh, these kind of services for people, man, and you're providing these kind of tools and resources for people, it should absolutely positively be free. Uh, my first one was free. Second one was free. Third one is free. It's going to always be free. Um, you know, and if, it, if I can't do it for free, I wouldn't do it. You know? So salute to everybody. Y'all see this Saturday. Now let's get back to the show. Jay-Z. Jay-Z. This is an old clip. Uh, if you watch Heart to Heart on Peacock with Kevin Hart, then you probably heard this clip, but this is Jay-Z speaking on how he reacts to his family when they ask him for money. Let's see. You have cousins. You got to go home for Thanksgiving and people are talking to you like Kevin Hart. I'll fight you after this. And you going home for solace. You want family. You're going home for peace of mind. You're going home for peace of mind. And they don't give you that your because you're not, is, you're not. Your cousins in your grandma's living room saying, yo, man, I got this, uh, I got this play. I want to, if you just give me... <laughs> you know what I mean? I Forty eight hundred, I could make you two million. You yeah. like it don't work like yeah. that, man. You gotta explain to him like life isn't like that. And money isn't free and it, no one's giving out opportunities. If it sounds too good to be true, it's really and then he like, Oh, you don't believe in my dream. Now I saw that in real time. You know? And I think um 
I don't think Jay Z is wrong in any way, shape, or form. And I know people, that, and I don't know if he said forty eight hundred or four to eight hundred. Did he say forty eight hundred or four to eight hundred, meaning thousand? Four to eight, forty eight hundred. I mean, I heard forty eight hundred. I heard forty eight hundred yeah. too. Somebody told me that he was saying four to eight hundred. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't give a fuck what the number is, and everybody's saying because of what his net worth is, literally forty eight hundred dollars is like a dime to him. What do you think of that, Schultz? Do you think Jay Z is obligated, or any of us are obligated, to give that kind of money? Now, I, can I think we're obligated to take care of our immediate family. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where obligated. Obligated is a strong word. I feel I have to take care of my parents. Okay. Oh, parents. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think parents, uh, bare minimum parents, but parents, siblings, like if we can take care of them, we should. Now, obviously, you have to create boundaries. Like if you have somebody. Siblings? Yeah, come on, bro. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> siblings? Yeah, yeah, siblings. Siblings is included in that. They have to deal with your ass the entire time. Let's say, for example, your sibling, let's say you don't care about your sibling at all, but you care about you mm -hmm. and your perception, and your sibling was homeless on the street. Now you look bad. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> wow. How do I look bad for the choices that they made? You're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not that's fucking it. crazy. Sorry. How do I look bad for the choices they made? What if, you know, people don't see, and, and this isn't my family at all, but what if people didn't see all the times we spent money on rehab for said sibling oh, and tried yeah. to get said sibling clean? I think there's a said difference. Yes. might have had an alcohol problem there's a or different scenario, a drug problem, sure. and so they ended up homeless on the street. You can only do but so much for people. We're talking about under normal circumstances. How do you know what is the normal circumstance? I'm, See, just, I'm just trying to say, how do you end up I feel like under normal is just your mama. That's the only person. That <laughs> just your mama. Is that it? Now, I will say in regard to the siblings, I'll do it because you're my mama's child. <laughs> so you're doing it for your mama? Yeah. That's great. Straight up. I do it because it's my mom's child. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. I, I, got, I, got, I love my siblings, but like I'm not- and God si forbid your mama passes. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> they still my mama's kids at the end of the day. But so she I'm, not here the But but here's the thing. My mom, and this is a true story, all of, everything I'm saying right here is true. My mom is the filter. Mm. So when I get those weird requests from family members, mm. she's the first person I call. Because two things about this conversation. Number one, if you don't have it to give. Or you've never been asked for that kind of money. I don't care about your opinion on this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But those of us who do have that, this this scenario happen to us quite often. You gotta have that filter. I call my mom every single time and say, such and such asked me for such and such. Cause I need to know, you know, number one, is this a legitimate claim? Or if she, when she thinks it's absolutely crazy, I know I'm not bugging. Mm. Cause I get some weird requests and the requests I hate are the requests like, I, I really do treat it like a lender. Like if you go to a lender, a lender's gonna look at you and a lender's gonna say, um, does this person have the ability to repay this loan? Mm. And the lender's gonna say, what financial history does this person have that they've made this kind of money before, right? Mm. If you don't have that, how you gonna ask me for $5,000 and tell me you're gonna pay me back in a month? Mm. You've never had $5,000. How are you going to ask me for $10,000 I mean, and tell me you're going to pay me back in a month? You've never had $10,000. So I think some would say like, hey, if you're a billionaire, so what if they don't pay you back? It's family. Some yeah, would say that. That's, that's, that's a person who's not a billionaire saying that. That's a person who hasn't worked for that money. That's a person who did not put in the same blood, sweat, and tears that you did to acquire what you have. And so now that I've done all of this work and I've accumulated this amount of wealth, you think I should just give it to somebody? I think sometimes that, giving it to somebody saves their relationship. Yeah. Because lending money to someone that you know most likely won't be able to pay you back, you guys are no longer friends. Don't ask me for a loan then. But sometimes- Tell listen, me, let it be a gift. Okay, how about we look at this two ways. Mm -hmm. One way is I completely understand what Jay-Z is talking about and empathize with what he's talking about. So 100%, I get it. And what you said earlier is 
so few people are ever even in that position. That's right. So it's like not very relatable. What's more relatable is having a dream and having a rich relative that might be able to support your dream. So everybody listen now got a relative that got a few bucks and then they're thinking, well, shit, if he only gave me this money, I could start my business. I could open my restaurant. I could open my whatever. Write up a business plan then. Treat me like you would treat a bank. Yeah. Don't but just I, come to me and ask me for money. But if I had Jay Z's money, I'm not asking for, I'm not giving you a, and I even kind of hold this practice as is now. It's like, if I give you something, I'm giving it to you. I'm not gonna get a, I'm not gonna loan it to you if I don't think you pay me back because now our relationship is done. That's right. Every time I see you buying something for yourself, I'm like, oh, word, you owe me $5,000, but you bought yourself a new vacation with you and your girl. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I have friends, for example, like they're, they don't have maybe the best relationship with like their parents and their parents will always talk about how they too broke to visit, but then go on vacations and shit. Mm. So it's this, there's this resentment and animosity. It's like, are you broke or you're not broke? Yeah. You're too broke to visit me. Yeah. You're not too broke when you got something to do. So I, in that situation, if I want to help somebody, I'm giving it. Yeah, I have no problem helping. But to your point, if you say, yo, man, I'm a little behind on rent or, you know, my my, my need a new alternator on my car, something like that makes sense, practical, yo, Take yeah, it. but this is what I hate. If I give you the money, don't go ghost on me because I'm not asking you for the money back. But now you feel like, damn, I told him I was going to pay him back in a, such and such couple of weeks. And but, you did it, so but now I he got to act different. Absolutely, but I'm not even looking, I'm not looking at you for yeah, that. Yeah, but you said loan, yeah. and y'all agreed to a loan. That's but, why you just give him the bread. But, but do you know what happens in those situations, too? Nah, bro, don't even worry about it here. You can, nah, nah, I'm going to pay you back. Nah, don't worry about it here. Nah, nah I'm going to pay you back. I, got, I told you don't worry about it. Mm. Now... You ghosted me, <laughs> not picking up my phone call, and I told you it's all good, but you feel bad. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't. I yeah. mean, loaning someone money is also another way to stop a relationship you don't want anymore. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. If you loan somebody money, you know they're not gonna pay you back. Yeah. They ain't calling. They ain't as gonna hang out. Yeah. They ain't trying to, it's yeah. like, I basically paid you $1,000 or $500 to never have to deal with this person that yeah. I know is on some fuck shit. Yeah, I, and I'm gonna tell you something else. I hate entitlement. And not only do I hate the sense of entitlement that some people have that are your family members, I hate the sense of entitlement that social media has with this conversation. How are you just gonna tell me just because I'm a billionaire, I should just give it to you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And by the way, this is the other thing we're not taking into consideration. Jay-Z actually knows his cousin. We don't. He knows business. <laughs> he, he, might, he might know this ain't the person to give that to. I'm sure he's looked out for different family members with money, you know, over the years for different things. He knows this ain't the person. Just like we know in our families right now, Yo, this ain't the person. I mean, outside of money, you just got to be more precious with your time. Like, how much of your time are you going to spend around with, uh, spend around people that you just really don't fuck with or yeah. have a history of not fucking with you? Like, yeah. And a lot of times we do it just because we got the same last name. That don't really mean shit to me. That's all I'm saying. Y'all looked at me crazy when I said siblings earlier. I don't give a damn that we got the same last name. Have you helped me build anything that I have? You know what I'm saying? If anything, you should be trying to say, yo, can I get a job? Bruh. That's more, that's more popping in, look, let me get up some money. I also think people are focusing on the wrong thing because he just said he turned it down because they didn't understand you can't turn 4,800 into 2 million. It wasn't like I'm turning I'm turning your request down because I don't got it. Yeah, and I think people are focusing on. Oh, we know he don't got it. Yeah, imagine Jay Z telling you he don't got it. <laughs> I mean, that'd be great. No, but I mean, that's why people are mad at him. He's like, yo, you're a billionaire. 4,800 is nothing to you. And he's like, no, the reason why I'm turning this down is because you just don't understand the business. You, you, that's why I'm not. Listen, Jay Z is an investor. He's yeah. made millions and millions of dollars investing. If you had a worthy investment. He would invest in Absolutely. You, you didn't come to me with yeah. a good business plan. Yeah. Treat me the way you would treat the bank. If you was going to the bank and asking for a loan, you would have a whole business plan written but out. We do have that kind of entitlement with family. And I I understand certain circumstances, right? Like, let's say, for example, your older brother kind of raised you or your older sister older raised brother. it. You are the older, older brother. I look out for my Love my older sister. So it's like, <laughs> let's say, for example, well, then it's your fault the siblings are fucked up. Mm. If you raised them. No, my siblings ain't fucked up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, you yeah. were saying they was fucked up. No, no, no. I was just using a hypothetical oh, scenario oh. of saying, like, siblings? Like, no, no, I'm I not entitled you. to take care of no siblings? Right. So, yeah. So, basically, what I'm saying is, like, let's say there are a lot of people who, like, were kind of pseudo-raised by their siblings. 
And those siblings had to sacrifice a lot for, let's say, me or you to be where we are. Like, let's say we were raised by older siblings. So I understand someone in that situation going, I want to take care of you. I want to make sure your life is good because you couldn't chase your dreams because you were feeding me when mom was working too. Shit. Like, I understand that dynamic. Yeah. But a random cousin that got the same name as you that you barely see ever, never wish you happy birthday, never nothing. And all of a sudden you got money, you popping, and they're like, yo, let me get something. I understand why people are like, hey, chill. Yeah. What you just said is very true too, right? Because people take, sorry to interrupt, people take advantage of the fact that you guys have the same name. That's right. But what means more to me is the investment that you've made in my life and the investment I made in your life. I don't care if we if you if we got the same last name and you doing that, how lucky am I? I got family, I got brothers doing that. But if we don't have the same name and you invested in me, I want to invest in you. That's right. And one of y'all, I think it was Al, you said who's one of y'all said something about perception earlier, right? That's the other thing they bank on. If you're a person in the public eye. Oh, yeah, you're an asshole. You, you know? yeah, they can't wait to be like, yeah, this motherfucker don't do shit for us, blah, 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 this and that. But when I do, you ain't on social media with that. Oh, no, you want all the credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I started my new business yeah. by myself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Listen, man, that shit is very, very difficult, and it's a very tight rope to walk. Because I know people who've gone damn near broke trying to take care of all the people around them. And it's a, it's admirable that you want to take care of people, but sometimes there's better ways to take care of people. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you can't take care of your family. I got Kids, word up and a wife. I got a whole other legacy that I'm building over here. Not you know only you got kids, but you want them kids to have kids. You want grandkids. That's you right. want to spoil all them. That's you right. Want to so I, I do get that. I think at the end of the day, it's like there are people that I've been fortunate enough in my life. You've been fortunate enough in your life that have like played these major roles. They love you. They hold you down. They could be family. They could be friends. You met in entertainment. And I'm sure you're still trying to work with them, help them in any way you can to help them succeed and thrive because mm -hmm. they poured into you. That's right. So you pouring into them. And then there are people who maybe didn't pour into you. There are people out there talking shit about you. Oh, look at this motherfucker, radio host, want to be a radio host, yeah, getting yeah, fired yeah. every single time they're laughing at you on Thanksgiving. That's right. Now they're asking for, oh, I'm going to open up or whatever. Can you give me a loan? That's right. I, I know you. Yeah. You remember all the fucking... Oh, man, I love those. Those are the ones I make sure I do stuff for their grandmas and their mamas. <laughs> it's a mystic. I love sick. it. I love it. Yeah, Ain't yeah. nothing like being home for Thanksgiving and your grandma looked at you and said, that McKelvey boy is so sweet. He came over here and he just gave us all his food. He bought the church robes. And oh, man, it it's drives like, the hater crazy. When the grandma or mama loves you. Ooh. <laughs> 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 I'm telling you, like do that. something for a grandma or mom. Yo, you got a hater out there? Do something for their grandma or mama for, for the holidays, yeah, yo. Yeah, and yeah. they got to hear about the nice thing that you that you did for them during the holidays. Oh, they'll be ready to kill you by New Year's. They got to eat the turkey you made. You got. You bought the turkey. <laughs> yo, how my turkey tastes. <laughs> how my turkey tastes, bro. Yo. yo, Shaq, tell me how my turkey tastes. <laughs> yeah, Shaq, so I think. Yeah, why Shaq? Well, you know, Kobe. No, who said that? Oh, Shaq. Uh, Shaq. 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 Kobe, tell me how my dick tastes. Yeah. No, ass. He said tell ass. My ass tastes, yeah. Man, I saw the funniest video. <laughs> Hold on, man. Look at this shit, man. What happened? Hold on. Go, go, go. Hold on, man. Hold on. Look at this video. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Yo, son, this is crazy, bro. That's, bro, that is... Yo, this guy is getting beat up. How does he even get behind him to bite his ass? Nah, that's crazy. This dude, that's this dude is getting beat up on the ground. Black Some people, <laughs> black people take gay fun too far. Hey, black people, chill out, bro. I know you don't want to have gay fun now. I know it's funny and everybody's enjoying it, but you're going too far with it, okay? And, and listen, how bad was you getting your ass beat that you had to bite somebody's ass? Bro. <laughs> And then don't let go like a pit bull. He, would not he was let locked go. in. The other guy just stopped fighting. He just stopped fighting. He's like, yo, let go of my ass. <laughs> oh, the moral of the story is, man, don't give nobody no goddamn money. No, take care of your people. No, man. <laughs> No, listen, I like taking care of my, I love taking care of my people, but I'm telling you, it's a limit. 
I said limit because I'm 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 too nice. My wife and my wife is the, my wife is the, the the filter too. Ruthless. Oh my god. Yeah. Because you know a lot of times they won't let people get to me because the requests get crazy. Like what? What's the craziest thing you've given requested? The craziest one. <laughs> I, I don't even want to say. I'll tell you the amount though. Go. It was uh I think the, it was like like. 40 racks. Sheesh. <laughs> Listen, it's a blessing to be a blessing. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. It's always a blessing to be a blessing, but I'm telling you, man, you have to set your boundaries because people will take advantage of you, especially, they will. especially family and people that you came up with. And the funny thing about people that you came up with, they be asking for requests where you be thinking to yourself like, we was never this cool. <laughs> like, like, we didn't kick it like that for you to be asking for this. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Can I ask you guys a question? Sure. What, one thing I've noticed, like, being around very, you know, successful, rich people is I'm always shocked when there's, like, a dinner situation, how everyone expects that person to pay. Well, I got a rule. So how do you guys deal with that? Like, I always, if there's a bill... I just pay. You just pay? But that adds up. Yeah, I got a rule. I don't pay for dinner if I'm with, out to dinner with anybody who got more money than me. I love that rule. You said that the first weekend we hung out. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> well, we hung out with Rihanna, and she was paying for all this shit. That's and right. you're like, I don't pay for shit if there's someone richer than me. That, that's disrespectful. Uh, that is a rule that has existed for over a decade. Why would I disrespect somebody? That's Why fast. would I disrespect people like that? Like, I know you the baller. Let me give you a Ball chance out. to pull out that black card. Ball out. I, I, I'll reach for the wallet. I'll... I, I, oh. <laughs> No, 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 I got it. You sure? <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I okay. am sure. I am. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. No, I just pay for that shit, bro. Now, it gets tricky when, when you're hanging out with other people who got money, but like, I usually just pay for it. Now, there are certain circumstances, like if we all go agree to do a thing, you don't want to like insult people, I think, too. Right. Like, if we're all going, we're all going to the movies or something like that. Everybody will get their own ticket. That's easy. But if we're all going to go, I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, let's say, for example, we all go and we decide to have this balling out weekend. If I just pay for it, even though I'm friends with successful people, it's almost a little insulting. So it's, it's like, you just, I think you just split it. Like, if we, if we go and have weekends, my wife will keep like a, an Excel sheet. And oh. it should be like, at the end of the weekend, let's pay this. And then what I'll usually do is that if I've invited people out, I'll take care of one or two things. We have a big dinner. We go out partying. I'll take care of that. See, I'll take care of the, I'll take care of the lodging. Or the... Because, because example, for yeah. me, it's like, you know, the people I, like that we invite out or want to come is people whose company I enjoy. Because you said you curate this the vibe. Is, you know what I mean? Yeah, but this is, this is also non-work things. Anything yeah, work related, absolutely. I pay for. Right, that's fair. Non work absolutely. things. I'm with that. We're all just adults hanging out. Yeah. But see, I've always wanted to be the adult I needed as a child. So, like, if there's like people on the come up in this business, you know, I know how it feels to not have but be hustling. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I didn't have people that I could turn to and say. I'm a little short on rent or the alternator, so whatever, you know what I mean? Like my other than my mom, right? So it's just like for me, if somebody comes to me with stuff like that, I don't have no problem helping the out. The people there are more important to me than the bill. Right. Yes. So if the people there can't afford the bill, we'll make it affordable because the people being there is more Because you want them there? Absolutely. Right. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, I want to salute to Doja Cat. I feel like we've been talking about Doja Cat the past few weeks on Yo, this podcast. Yo, you were right, by the way, about the Billboard chart. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Did I jump what? the gun? Did this? Oh, did I, I'm sorry. Wait, what is <laughs> that? This, right? this what you're talking about? <laughs> Wait, is Doja Cat back on top? She's in the back number one. Wait, I thought last week she was, it dropped down. She was number two. She was number two last week. Why? What was number one last week? Uh, what was number one last week? I thought, it, I thought it was uh, Drake and SZA. Drake and SZA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drake and SZA was number one last week on Billboard. Hold on. Isn't that the song that you said wasn't really popping? And then when it was number one on Billboard, everybody's like, look at this idiot, Charlemagne. Uh, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking I about. I said that? And he's an asshole. And he's just a hater because it's the number one song. 
And you said, well, anybody can make a number one song. All you got to do is buy streams, and the next week it won't be number one again. Well, it must still well, be. Why, the, why didn't, I, well, is it still in the top 10, though? Well, real quick, I, it, it, when it comes to the buying the streams, I don't think that Drake and SZA had to buy streams. Well, not even SZA. It wasn't that Drake bought streams. Drake and SZA are Drake and SZA. So they're massive artists. They're massive artists. So if they the put curio out, yeah, the curiosity is going to make people Biggest run out rapper there. alive. One of the biggest, biggest R&B artists, yeah. artists alive. They come together, they put right. out a song. People are going to be curious. They're going to run the, They're going to run to go scream it out of curiosity. Radio's going to play it crazy out of curiosity. But like we said last week on the podcast... The test is mm. how long does it stick around? And what I said was- It's like it, celebrity tequila. Celebrity <laughs> tequila. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> drops a tequila. It's hot for a month. But what happens a year from then? It's like celebrity tequila. <laughs> yeah, podcast. Yeah, our or podcast. podcast. Our podcast. Oh, I'm in here? Oh, wow. I didn't know I was in this article. This is the Billboard <laughs> article. What, uh, yeah, what is it for certain about this album? Anyway, like, th all I'm simply saying is we were saying how Doja Cat painted the town red. I was like, yo, that's a real hit record. Mm -hmm. The reason it's a real hit record is because it's been on, it was number one before. It's been on the charts. You hear it everywhere. You felt it. You feel it. You hear it in the clubs. You hear it when you're out at restaurants. You it's feel it. It's all over it. TikTok. Yes. It's on Instagram. Yes. It's just you feel yes. a number one hit. Yeah. So this week, Doja Cat painted the town red is back number one. Scissor. Is that number two with Snooze? Luke Combs is three with Fast Car. Taylor Swift is four with Cruel Summer. Uh, Zach Bryan and Casey Musgraves is number five. I remember everything. Morgan Wallen is number six with Last Night. Olivia Rodrigo is number seven with Vampire. Gunna, fuck you mean? And number eight. That's another hit record. I mean, that's just everywhere. Yeah. Number nine, Calm Down. Rena and Selena Gomez. Dance Tonight. Dua Lipa is number ten. Drake and Scissors not even in the top ten no more. Wow. Do you think you're you deserve an apology? No, man, because I'm never trying to. I'm, it's, I'm not. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just speaking how I feel. You know what I mean? And I, you could just feel it. But listen, that means nothing because this album comes out Friday. So what you're going to see next week in Billboard is probably four or five of these ten songs yeah, are going to be Drake records. Yeah. Off for of all the dogs. Wait. So then, is your coordinated rollout with Drake did it flop? No, because we hit number one. I mean, you didn't stay there, though. I didn't. I told y'all it wouldn't. But that's my fault for telling everybody it was planned. But also, you can't do all the heavy lifting. Bro. I can't, uh, you know? You can't do everything. That's right. It you got already the, propped them up, put them at number one. It's like, come yo, on. come on. Y'all need to do something to stay there. Come on. All, all Drop you, a video. That's right. All you. That's right. Drop a video. You put them that's at number right. one. That's right. That's you right. You literally got articles. Everybody's talking about it. They're cursing you out. They're defending crazy. them. They're it's like, crazy. what you talking about? This song is amazing. It's crazy. Right? And then all of a sudden, all those people, they're like, yo, my God, this song is amazing. It's the greatest song I've ever heard. For whatever reason, they stopped listening to the song. Why That's would right. they do that? That's right. That's Have right. Have your man's back. That's right. And, and, and all of y'all that like to report on these top tens of Billboard, I ain't hear you report on that this week. Mm. Are you trying to say that they purposely, are you trying to say that they purposely avoided that topic? Yes. And why would they do that? Because they don't want me to be right. Why don't they want you to be right, yo? I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy. It is. <laughs> but I'm not trying to be right, guys. What are you trying to be? I'm just 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 podding. You know what I'm we saying? Just podding, bro. <laughs> we just podding, bro. <laughs> we just be podding. But no, uh, for all the dogs, that shit is going to have like five or six. So watch, next week in the top ten, it's going to be like five or yeah. six Drake songs in the top They're ten. They're going to crush it. Drake, I mean, and, and, I mean, Doja will still probably be top two, top three with Paint the Town Red, but uh, Drake's definitely going to have like five or six songs in the top ten. I don't know, though, because country music been fucking shit up this year, too. I have to say, yeah, country music These is These country songs, like the Morgan Wallen and the Luke Combs and all that shit has been up there. Taylor Swift, they've been Kill fucking it. shit up. Kill it. But also, this is Drake. It's like Drake. The guy knows how to put out fucking great music, has been doing it for over a decade, so. Do we have any anticipation for the album? Well, not anticipation is not the word. Do we have expectations for the album? Oh, I I expect it to be great. I expect the album to be great. I think if you don't expect greatness for somebody who's the number one rapper alive, then you have a very interesting relationship with them. Like, how can you call someone number one if you don't expect the project he puts out to be fantastic? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if, if Kendrick is putting out an album, we're expecting greatness, right? But Kendrick, 
is different because he doesn't sure. give us a lot of music. Sure, but at the same time, there's still a high expectation. Like, with, yeah, with Kendrick, I have anticipation and expectation because we don't hear enough, a lot from him. Yo, that is an interesting thing with this with this Drake album. I have zero anticipation for it, but once he comes out with it, I'm ready to listen. Yeah, because it's going to be the talk of the internet. But also, like, I'm just gonna, I'm interested. I, I feel like I just said it's gonna be the taco or the internet. No, no, no. <laughs> of the internet. The talk of the internet. The talk of the internet. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it's like, but that is interesting where it's like, I wonder whose music I can't wait to drop. Like, whose music can I not wait what to am listen I anticipating? to? Anticipating? Oh, I, I, I'm, Kanye. I'm, I'm, so, for example, if we heard Kanye's dropping, I would go, love to hear what he's been going through this whole time and see how it's gonna translate into the music. Good point. There you go. I don't give a point. fuck. I, I, what I would just want to hear the beats because he makes great beats. He's yeah. whether what he, you know whatever he's blabbering on top of them is meaningless. But and I would he love to hear about the beats. talks that he's having with Adidas again. Now that the guys are saying that he's not the things he said is not there's too no, bad. There's no talks. I'm just I'm saying they're protecting he, themselves, not him. We'll they're see. They're protecting themselves. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, um, I mean, what the guy from Adidas said is just like. Common sense, like yeah, Kanye was a great part. my time, uh, I think Kanye West is one of the most creative people in the world, um, and uh, you know, both in music and, and what I will call street culture. So he is extremely creative and has, together with Adi, uh, you know, created a Yeezy line, which was very successful. Um, and then, as creative people, you know, he did some statements which wasn't that good, and and that caused Adi to break the contract and withdraw the product. Very unfortunate because um, I don't think he meant what he said and, and I don't think he's a bad person. It just came across that way. And that meant we lost that business. You know, one of the most successful collabs in the in the in the history. Uh, very sad. Um, but he also said he what didn't he mean said what he said. Not that bad. Yeah, but we knew that. Kanye don't never mean Kanye don't mean shit. He, he just says, says anything. Good or do bad. anything. <laughs> like, did you but see he, the leaks this week? He didn't have to say that. Is all I'm saying. I'm just saying. I think he. Kanye don't have to say ninety eight percent. No, the guy from says. Adidas is what I'm. Do you know what Kanye? He didn't have to talk. Question. Do you know what Kanye is? I just realized. You know how there's been these like uh, streamathons recently, people live streaming. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Kanye is the first live streamer. Only he didn't hold the phone. Yo. He would go to interview to interview, <laughs> dropping crazy thing that would go viral on the internet. Like the exact same thing that we saw happen with Fousey. We saw that happen first with Kanye, Kanye. West would be the first person to tie a Kai and knock the fuck out. Yo, real talk. Kanye West. 24 hour exhaust, stream. Oh, he would exhaust. Six hours in, Kai's like, yo, yo, we got to go to bed. We got to go to bed. <laughs> Motherfucker won't shut up. Kai, Kai Sadat would be nope. under the bed sleep I'm dying, having yeah. to fucking do a live stream with Kanye. No. Pull up those Kanye clips, Taylor, where he was talking shit about uh, Cardi and... Because uh, I thought this was interesting. Pull up the one actually where he was talking about Nas and Pusha T. Because I thought for a producer, this was interesting. Let's do this and let's go to Ask an Idiot. It ain't going to be in this situation. It's going to be a get me out this motherfucking good music shit now and scooter ain't gonna be no oh, i'm still putting my name on a shit i need to get rid of good music because i'm great and guess what good is the enemy of great the fuck i'm doing giving wanna love you to fucking tiana what the fuck i'm doing giving that daytona album to pusha what the fuck i'm doing bro that shit like I, that shit was three dark fantasies that i gave away cop shot the kid nas rapping all goddamn offbeat on it don't even want to shoot a video they shoot the video don't even tell me these motherfuckers don't appreciate me all these motherfuckers is trying to use me i'm the greatest motherfucking artist living and i can do everything and i'm not being expanded and my vision is not being expanded to what it is i'm performing at other people's festivals and shit i've been wanting a fucking festival people not touring my shit people saying i'm locked in a pump shit i've been recouped these these niggas made fa fake black skinheads. I got the fake black skinhead. Marty Van Deer told me, I'm sick. I'm sick. Ain't nobody reached me. Y'all boys better not fuck with me, bro. These boys better not about to play that black, black, black skinhead on Twitter live quick. And I know my life is on the line when I'm talking. But I know ain't nobody gonna touch me because I'm too high profile. I'm not triple X. So y'all can't take me out. But I bet you I get off my motherfucking publishing. I bet you I get my motherfucking festival. And I bet you I get off a of universal. And I bet you y'all don't talk to Adidas again. See, I didn't understand that last part because this is from 2018. I didn't understand the last, like, so what, like, I don't, I didn't understand the last part about Adidas. But here's my point about this conversation. The reason this is a weird conversation is because you're the CEO of good music. 
you signed these artists, and you're a producer, so you chose the executive produce. Are you just Nas finding out album. now that he sucks? <laughs> Is that what you're just realizing that as a human being, this guy is a raging, narcissistic lunatic? Yeah, this is the worst kind of person to like be in business with because he's the type of person that'll do stuff for you. Yep. Right? All he cares and then, about and, is and, him. And then once he does it, he acts like, you know, he holds it over your head. Like, I, why the fuck did I give you that? Like, if Tiana's CEO killed, then it would be because he's the greatest. If it flops, yeah. it's because he's wasting it on Tiana. But Daytona was a classic. We yeah. love pushing T's Daytona. I love we. Uh, I want to love you from Tiana Taylor. That album was great. That song was fantastic. He's absolutely right about Nas rapping off beat on Cop Shop to Kid. Hmm. I thought that was weird because I actually heard that song. Kanye let me hear that song without Nas on it. Um, long time ago. So I heard it when it was just Kanye, and the shit was dope. You know, so I never understood why he put Nas on there, and I never understood why Nas was rapping <laughs> off beats like that. I think that it was, was strange. I think he was trying to do the young kid thing. You know, you think like, so? yeah, like. Like the Yachty type of but that style. Was, yeah, I guess. Yeah. It was just weird. But um, yeah, I just don't understand why if you're the CEO of a record label and you're a producer who actually produces for other artists, why you would be upset that you gave other artists hit records yeah, and classic yeah. albums. It don't make any sense to me. I didn't understand He's that. He's a lunatic. And why can't Kanye do his own festival? Of course he can do his own festival. We got the Black Effect. I do. I did a festival. Yeah, He's doing another. Do he's doing the Black want. Effect no. podcast festival again next year. Like you, Kanye you could do a festival if you want to do a festival. I just mean, do the festival. Yeah, he's so entertaining because you're just watching a crazy person. Yeah. So, but like, at eventually, it just starts to get exhausting. Go to go to the Cardi one, Taylor. The Cardi one is interesting too. And the thing about Kanye, Kanye knows how to get the dark web going, bro. Like he knows. Like listen to this. That's some paranoid shit. Yes, Corey is CIA. Like, he didn't even have to say it. I know it. You fucking CIA. Who's who's CIA? Corey. What the fuck? No, Corey. Oh, Corey. This is my job. Oh. Kardashian. This is my, this is my, this is my, this is He's Illuminati. The one that's giving Christian that's why I, black. Fucking Cardi B was over there. Hey. Cardi B is a plant by the Illuminati. She don't write her raps. She just there to, like, sound as you ignorant don't write as possible. Raps. <laughs> and just and then make songs like fuck him and then get some money. Yeah. You know, she just literally replaced, you know, Nicki Minaj purposely. That they put her there. And now she doesn't know what to do. And she's just a fucking she has no idea what the fuck is going on. She thinks it's just a blessing from the universe. There ain't no blessing from the fucking universe. Either. That's not some paranoid shit. What's so interesting about this one, right? Is <laughs> What 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 about what what does Kanye think he's doing that would make the CIA and people want to kill him? Like I'm just saying, like what is also, he what does he think he's saying? Like what does he think bro, he's doing that's so revolutionary that would make some make the government want to take him out? Yeah, I mean this is just trying what, to run for president. Just a crazy person. You know how many oh no, he is a crazy person. I'm just saying. I'm saying some are, type of logic of what this is he the can narcissism. Say. The narcissism yeah. is there. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Also, the other thing that's so funny about the industry plant thing is just like if the industry was actually good at planting, that's all they would do. Like, like yeah. they don't have control of it. You don't have control over Cardi B's personality. None. She has a gift from God that when she talks into a microphone in any interview, conversation, Twitter, whatever, she is a lightning rod. You're paying attention. She's funny. She's interesting. She's passionate. And she and had this before she was even doing exa music. Exactly. She was doing it on social media she when she was doing sketches and just talking. I, w I was literally on the internet saying, Cardi B is a superstar. Cardi B for president. So I, did the industry plant her? Come on. Or was she a superstar and the industry was like, how can we make money off this superstar? Bro, That's we, not a plant. I, we, I, I, Cardi, I had Cardi on Uncommon Sense on MTV2 back in like 2014 or some shit like that. Like it was before Love and Hip Hop. You just knew Cardi B was a star. Like she yeah. just had it. All you got to do when somebody has that type of star power and they garner an audience, figure out what you're going to feed the audience. She decided that it was going to be music. That's it. From music, it went everywhere else. And I'll tell you something else. I remember uh, Kanye saying to me one time, um, yo, I love that line when Cardi says, uh, it was something about, uh, I'm, I, I'm something about Gucci and hangers. 
I forgot what it was. Something I got too many, too much Gucci. I'm about to run out of hangers. I, it was some line. I forgot who it was. And he was, he wanted to know who was pinning for party at the time. I mean for Cardi. Yeah. And it was Party. And then so Party, he bought Party in the right form. So it's just like it's it's the I most didn't, entertaining I didn't thing. Understand yeah. this. The most entertaining thing about Kanye is that everybody takes him seriously and he's a crazy person. And that's why it's entertaining. Once you look at him and you're like, oh, this guy's like uh, crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Kanye's crazy at all. Well, no. I think we yeah. all deal with our own different, you know, mental health issues. But the mental I, I, health I, think issue. when, I think when Kanye does stuff like this, it's strategic. And I'll tell you why. Because three things happen. This leaked footage comes out, right? So people start talking about Kanye. Then what do you see? Him performing music from his new album with Ty Dolla Sign. He's building anticipation for his album. Kanye's just like Trump, y'all. Kanye knows how to stir up waters to catch fish. He knows when but to he come don't out and the, start talking. But he don't got the music anymore, man. We don't know that, though. I don't think he, the I don't think, he got it. The, whole, the reason I would get pushback, he's also a perfectionist. And if you look at the leaked footage, he wouldn't want that out there. Like, I would say 80% 80, 80 of that, you can't even hear what's I'll being tell you talked why, about. I'll tell you why I say stop it. Remember when Kanye was doing all those short projects? He did one with Cuddy. Yes. He did yeah, one yeah, with yeah. Nas. Yeah. He did one. Uh, he did Tiana. He, those weren't perfect at all. Yeah, but the, yeah. like he would. Like, that's why Nas was off beat. Trust me, on cop shot the kid. Watch this leak situation. You can't hear half of it. It's bad. Like it's like a super rough cut. Listen, of what would have been a good. Doc. I don't think. I, I think Kanye doesn't care about perfection like that anymore. No, he just wants attention. Whatever yep. gives him attention. He doesn't yep. care about the music. He doesn't care about anything. I do, his he, attention. He's walking around with his girl barefoot in fucking tights because he wants attention. <laughs> if he really cared about the art, he would just focus on the art. Yeah. But he understands that if he walks around with this big titted, racially ambiguous woman. You think she's racially ambiguous? Yeah. She looks like a Kelsey. No. 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 She looks like she could be Hispanic. Listen, stop. Kanye knows that he cannot do it on his own. He needs a woman for people to be interested. You think she looks Hispanic? Done. You can go to Washington. Kanye can't do it on his own. Cuban, Florida. That's racially ambiguous. and, And not only can he not do it on his own, he can't do it with a black woman. He needs racially ambiguous Big tit. If he had a black woman, it would it would generate way more interest. No, they don't care. He's tried. If people don't care, Julia Fox shuts down the internet. Amber shuts down the internet. Kim shuts down the internet. Y'all don't think Amber's black? Bianca Sensori. No, Amber Rose is part black. Yeah. But she doesn't look traditionally. It's it's racial ambiguity. I don't think this Bianca chick looks racially am, am, amphibian at all. And Julia Fox all. was a straight white girl, and that shit blew up. I don't think she looked racially amphibian at all, bro. <laughs> like, she looks like a white gal. What? He tried it with the Latina. Who's Nobody Latina? cared. Oh, yeah. That one right there. Ooh. No one cared. She's Latina? Yeah. This one. No one cared. He needs a basically a white-ish looking girl that got big tits. That's sad. But it appears that there's not as much of a. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna tell you why investment. I'm gonna tell you why the music is interesting me. Uh, not interesting me. To to Alex's point, I do want to hear what he has to say only because there's nothing else that he has to focus on right. Yes. Now. You know what I'm saying. So for the past however what year, couple of years. It's just music. He's, he's, there's no fashion to do right now. There's no sneakers to do right now. It's just music. I'm interested to hear what, because that that's the only place I'm gonna ever give Kanye genius at, is in music. Mm-hmm. So I want to hear. I want to hear what he does. I do. I mean, I, I, I'll listen. I, give I mean, it he's world. so mind-bogglingly talented when it comes to producing music. That's what I'm saying. I give it a whirl. There's no question. So I agree with you. No matter what. We're going to give him that opportunity. Yeah. The second he puts it out, we're going to listen to it. Curiosity. Of course, 100%. And I, it, and I think that's why it's a little bit less interest for Drake right now, because, like, what can he say that we haven't heard? Drake. That's true. That's true. I get I, it. Like, for example. I, mean, I, I, know, I, know, I know some places Drake could take it. Well, no, no. If he wanted to go there. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear about him and fatherhood. I think that would be fantastic to hear about him and, you know, raising a son, even if it's just like one or two records. Like, uh, even if it's just one record, like, it's like a deep, thought provoking record about being a father. And if he know? gives that, I think people would love it, but I just don't think he is going to go there. Or tell us about how he really does want to be in love, how he does really want to have a family. He would love to, you know, have a wife. Ain't nobody listen to the lyrics, bro. 
Drake? Yes, yeah, nah, Drake. No, Drake. No, 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 I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not saying that people don't. Obviously, with Drake, he's got fucking bars. That's all he. Yeah, Drake. Yeah, Drake captivates people with his. Of bars. course, of course, unbelievable. His bars uh, become headlines. Unbelievable, like word economy. It's great. What yeah. I'm saying is, oftentimes, some of the biggest songs ever. I know in a hotline bling. Like, what? I don't even know what the fuck that is. It, like, I don't know what a hotline bling is. That shit happened today at 220. <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> Your shit so didn't do that? It's yeah, Wednesday. It's yeah. Wednesday today, by the way. Yeah. So everybody gets that joke. That was a great joke. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm saying is like, there's something about music where even not even understanding the lyrics, you're still like, oh my God, this is amazing. There's a reason why he can go to fucking Korea and they can be singing words to him, back to him that people don't even understand. Yeah. There's something beyond lyrics when it comes to music, <laughs> right? That's a great Korean song, by the way. I know when that hotline bling. <laughs> <laughs> North Korea coming. <laughs> it's an invasion. I won. I won. I know when that hotline bling. Here comes China. <laughs> <laughs> so I I guess I guess what I would oh this is an interesting thing it's like and it's so easy to say from the sidelines but like the anticipation for Drake is I don't think it's been set and I think he's tried it but I think it's been set up what type of album we're about to get mm. like I know he's like for all the dogs I'm going back to my thing like but go, what does that mean they've done so many different things what are you going back to if he was going to put out let's say like an Afro Beats album even if people didn't like it, there'd be anticipation because it's like, yo, there's a thing mm -hmm. that is he's dabbled in, but he's putting out a whole album. I yeah. want to see if he could pull it off. So doing the new thing, I think with with Kanye, we're at this point where it's like, does he still have it? Because last album, he ain't have it. I tell you, I tell you what, Drake maybe has, last few he ain't have it. That's, so, you're right. I tell you I'm what, no, he's absolutely right. I tell you what, Drake has that Kanye I don't think has anymore. I think Drake has a devoted fan base for his music. Oh yeah, hmm. Kanye's just Kanye. Bro. Kanye. Kanye has a fan base. People like Kanye, you know, whether it's for the antics, whether it's for the sneakers, whatever else. But you might not necessarily be checking for his music. Ain't nobody you, singing new Kanye. Yeah, Drake's Drake. Ain't nobody yeah. know the lyrics of new Kanye. Yeah, he just did so much to dwindle down that fan base. But that Drake shit, bro. I remember, bro. I was doing shows at the Mothership in Austin. And Drake came on, and it was like a Drake playlist. And the comics and some of the door people there who were also comics were rapping to Drake, bro. And it was like, I mean, it, they, it, it was like, it felt like I was at a Taylor Swift show. <laughs> bro, the way, the way, the way that he represented what they wanted to be true in either their lives or their dreams or their yeah. aspirations, bro, and they were all in unison rap. I was enjoying watching them rap, and I'm like, okay, that's different. Mm. But if you put on old Kanye, they, we'll do yeah, that exact absolutely, same absolutely. shit, bro. That's, true, that's what you know what's so interesting. The one thing I would love to see in hip hop, even though it'll, it'll never happen because Kanye insulted Drake's whole community, uh, offended his whole community, I would have loved to see a Drake album executive produced, produced by Kanye. Kanye. Forget it. See you later. Oh, out of here. God, that would be see you later. Out of here. Great. Man. That would be nuts. You know, and, 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 and with 40 overseeing it, because we all know that the, the influence that Kanye had yeah. on Drake, you know what I'm saying? See you later. And like, Oof. I just think that that would have been fantastic. See you later. A, a Drake album executive later. produced by Kanye overseen overseen by 40? See you later. Oh, that, man. Yeah, you got see that. you later. Man. And on the flip side, you could do a, a a a Kanye album written by Drake. Fire. You know what I'm saying? Because Drake knows. Fire. Yay. I think that'll even be better. Ain't you know? Gonna be ain't gonna lie to you. Drake could write so. Kanye's apology song to the Jewish community. So. Yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Drake, that's the, how we, that's how we get to the Drake album executive right. produced by Kanye. Drake has to write the apology letter. For Kanye, mm -hmm. the, 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 the song, it's a song, but it's an apology letter to the Jewish community. That's genius. Yes. The only person that could save Kanye <laughs> is his arch nemesis, Drake. Damn. I mean, this is a Marvel movie. Come on, man. Right now. Come on, man. Right. Holy Come on, man. shit. Talk about hip hop, what ifs. I mean, that'd be crazy. But I would love to hear a Drake 444. I think that's what he hasn't given us yet. Well, he's not to that age. He's not there yet. I mean, I'm talking about just right, like, but you know what though? You're right because Kendrick gave us that with his last album. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can, you can take it there. If Kendrick Drake did the work. I mean, Kendrick oh, did the work though. 
Kendrick was in therapy. Like Kendrick went, he did the work on himself. That's what I'm saying. I think Drake says he goes to therapy though. He's done chasing. You got to be done chasing. Taylor's so crazy. <laughs> Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. I saw Sexy Red yesterday. How was she? I, I, I just saw her in rehearsal with a bonnet on. Oh, oh, cool. Asking idiots, Taylor. It's 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 truly unbelievable. Uh, I love you so much. Junior, oh, this is a good one. This is a great question, Junior Solars. Great, good question. If LeBron came before Jordan, would there be an argument of who was better? Um, no. If if LeBron came before Jordan and Jordan had, if LeBron had his same career and Michael Jordan had his same career, Michael Jordan would go to the number one basketball player of all time. Clearly. Because, of course. Because yeah. it, it's there like, was LeBron before LeBron yeah. and before Jordan. His name was Bill Russell. It was a Bill and Russell. No, no. There was a Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Magic, people forget Mike, Magic Johnson had won yeah. five world championships. He had been to the finals nine times. You Yo, know what I mean? He was what, an MVP. Like Magic, Magic stats are ridiculous. What's the generation after mine? Is it Gen Z? I think so. Gen Z or whatever the fuck y'all are. Yeah. No, I thought it was uh, Pop. Pop this dick in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had him. 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 <laughs> I, 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 I was like, got him. I think I got him. I think I got him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, they're doing everything they can to to convince us that LeBron is better than Jordan. He ain't. Yeah, it's just not, it's man. It's just not it's it. It's just not. And he's great. It don't mean that he's not the greatest basketball player of this generation. Sure. Eh? You don't say it, but I'll say That's that. That's debatable. <laughs> But, but not nah, Jordan is different, and y'all didn't see him, so y'all don't know, but Jordan is different. See, yo, Steven Jackson posted the other day, he posted a picture of LeBron, Michael, and Kobe Bryant, and he put Michael, Dean, and Kang in that order. <laughs> and I'm not debating about it. I played against all of them, okay? I'm telling you, Michael, Bean, Kang. I agree with him. Kane? King, King, like when he said oh, King. King. Yeah, King. Yeah, 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 King. yeah, 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 yeah. So no, if LeBron came before Jordan and they had the same careers, I mean, we'd be looking like, what the fuck? Man, I, yeah, I don't, if a guy goes to the NBA Finals six times and does not lose. Come on, come on. NBA it, and, uh, Finals MVP every single time. Stop, stop, stop. I, I can't even remember how many Finals MVP awards he won. Like, you, stop. man, come on, man. LeBron ain't even won with white teammates. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, LeBron Yo, ain't even with white teammates. Okay. <laughs> what are we talking I want to hear more. I'm just saying, like, LeBron ain't even win with white teammates playing a significant role. <laughs> Jordan out here, Jordan out here like Bill Parcells taking white That's to right. the promised land, John bro. Paxson, Steve <laughs> Kerr, Luke Tony Longley. Kukoc, Luke Longley. Who's Stop it. Stop it. It's not even a conversation. LeBron can't take no white dude to a championship. <laughs> Shit, fuck out of here. Who's this Bill Wennington? Fuck out of here, yo. <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck out of here, bro. Yo, I don't want to hear no more about the LeBron Jordan no. debate ever Can't even again. win with white teammates. Wow. Who are you? Wow. You need black guys to win? Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, you need black wow. players to win? Wow. That's cheating. Jordan was trusting white men with the last with shot With the last shot. Come on, man. Yo, Come crazy. on, yo. That's crazy. That's some shit. That's crazy. I made white men <laughs> rise to the level yo, they needed to be to in basketball. Low key? Had to punch one in the face. <laughs> Had to punch that's one in the face. Takes. But that's, that's what, what it takes. takes. And he went on to be an amazing coach. Okay? Yeah. God damn it, I'm saying Michael you cannot Jordan. be considered one of the greats to play basketball if you ain't taking white people to the promised land. Bro, <laughs> think about it. LeBron ain't take no fucking significant white players to the None. promised land. None. Not not So he's not even None. in there. Literally, None. he's not in there. Like None. I can't even. I don't even know if you should count the championships. It don't count if you just <laughs> win with black guys. No, it is Bro, Bill Russell took like four white dudes. This is, man, Kyrie Irving hit the big shot against Golden State. Ray Allen hit the big shot against motherfucking uh, the Spurs. If you did not wow. take white people wow. to the championship wow. on your back, wow, you ain't really win, bro. Wow, Tim Duncan. Wow, Tim Duncan. 
Them Tim Duncan, Duncan took, took fucking European, European players. European white boys. Yeah, yeah. Holy yeah, shit. Absolutely. <laughs> before Holy they, shit. Before they were nice. Before. Yeah. <laughs> had to go find these bums. Damn. <laughs> I'm just saying, LeBron, they tried to do it last year with Austin Reeves, and it ain't happening. It ain't happening. That's their big three. Now, I saw the pictures. LeBron, Anthony Davis, and AR-15, Austin Reeves. No, he got traded. He, he's somewhere else now. Really? I think so. No, I thought- Austin it, Reeves is still on the Lakers? Yeah. Shit, I saw we don't, the, I we saw don't the, even know. I saw the promo pics the other we day. We don't even know. If you can't take white guys to the championship, Damn. you're not considered one of the greatest ever. Give me more greats. Yeah, Austin's still there. Give me more greats. What else we got, Taylor? Let's do some more. Give me, give me Y'all can't give days. me one more great? Bird. Larry Bird. Kevin McHale. Larry Bird. But Larry Bird was white, though. That's different. No, that was wasn't. a white team. Larry Bird ain't white. I yeah, mean, that, that was a white team. Nah, off, Larry Bird ain't off, white. Based off this logic, Bill Russell took By the way, most. that Yo, Boston Celtics team. I told team, him. I said he took four. That's the whitest NBA team ever, you know? What? That's the whitest NBA Larry championship team though. ever. Larry Bird's not white. He's not? Look at Larry Bird. Look at a picture He's of Larry like Bird. Travis Kelsey white. No. <laughs> That motherfucker's country black. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky black. Yo, he's a Kentucky black. Bro, look at Larry Bird. Look at you tell me that's a white guy. <laughs> look at that guy right there. Zoom in, zoom in close and tell me that ain't a black man. That look like a fucking no, that's a black him. ass man. Larry Bird. You hear the name Larry Bird. It's a white guy or it's a black dude? Larry got kids? Does he? He don't know. Black Nick. ass Larry Bird. <laughs> look, 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 the hick from French League. And Larry Legend. Nah, Bird was that guy, bro. We don't respect Bird like we should, man. They don't put the Bird. Bird ain't in the conversation enough. Well, maybe Bird ain't take. Did he take? No, he took Kevin McHale. What? Kevin McHale, hey. Danny Ainge. Oh, he really deserves oh, it. Oh, come on, man. Like name Bird. other people. Other people are great at basketball. Tim Duncan took the whites. He took some whites. Magic Johnson took some whites. Took Magic some Johnson whites. had Kurt Rambis on oh, there. Oh my God. Yeah, he took some whites. Dirk was white. I know. Yeah, Dirk was white. Hakeem Olajuwon. One white guy. Barely. Yeah. Who was the white guy on that team? They had a center. I forgot the guy's name. A backup. Backup Man. center. I don't remember. That don't count. Yeah. You got to take that dream shake. What dream? I have a dream. <laughs> I have a dream I get a fucking championship. <laughs> that's the dream I fucking got, but not with you. You can't, That's greatness, bro. Carl Malone. Carl Malone never got a championship. Never got one. Oh, shit. Couldn't take right, the white up right, there with him. Yeah, he, he, the he, he, he had one of the great, He had one of the greatest, greatest whites, whites ever right? to play the game yeah. of basketball. Oh, yeah. my God. If you gave that fucking white to Jordan, what would have happened? Man. Come on, man. <laughs> John, what? Hey, we would we'd be debating who's the greatest point guard of all time. It's John Stockton, close. Magic Johnson, or Steph Curry. It's not even close. Uh, Obio Mayadon says, what do y'all think is the next big investigation that'll change humanity forever? Easy call. Extraterrestrials. I think it's going to be extraterrestrials are uh, um, what's like li living creatures under the water, human-like species under the water, or maybe actual humans, you know, under the water. I think it's the reason the Earth is 75% water. I think it's the reason that human beings are 75% water. I think that there's a... I did think there's a reason we can't live without water. I think that there's a much bigger connection to water than we even know. I think there's a lot of shit down there. And maybe that's where aliens go to just cool out for a little bit. I agree with that. I seen it. I'm telling you, I seen it in Anguilla over the summer, yo. If you don't scroll down, Taylor, that so green we can light, stop listening to this that fucking shit, I'm telling you, that green light was going in and out of the water, man. Ask Car Carlos Miller was there. He saw it with me. He saw it. Go down, go down, go down. Y'all um, were both high. We were, but that has nothing to do Who with Who would win that? a rap battle, Charlotte or Andrew? Come on, man. Nah, Charlotte, Charlotte, watch me, man. Big Charlotte, you know I make them holler. Never been a scholar, but I can make a dollar. Mm. Ooh, mm. shit. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of, you gonna lie, that was kind of Hey. Big uh, what Taylor. Was it? She loves what was the it? chat. Charlotte Van Winkle, what was the rap name back in the day? <laughs> yo. What, Taylor? What was your rap what? name? Something Van Dizzy Winkle, Van right? Winkle. Dizzy Van Winkle. Why do you yes, get upset bro. just now? Yo, Dizzy, go off, Dizzy. Go <laughs> off, Dizzy. Yo, Dizzy, go off. Go off on Taylor, Dizzy. She told me to stop. She don't want none of these you don't bars. Want to, you don't want to hear the bars? Why not? You can go back up, Taylor. You came back for the BET Awards. Oh, name <laughs> three directors. Like, you should have gotten that cypher, right? Bro. Got so, a body to cypher. Oh, man. <laughs> A body decipher. Uh, the underscore corner says, name three directors you would trust with making brilliant idiots the movie. Ooh. I want to do that one day. You know what I was thinking, man? I want to do a Tubi movie. <laughs> 
Like, I want to do a movie that just sucks on purpose. Like, it's so bad. You know what I'm saying? You don't think that'd be funny as shit? It would be. Like, we do a Tubi movie. That's funny. Sure. All the people on Tubi is like, damn, my, my movie was good. I really tried hard <laughs> yeah, on that one. Yeah, they really hard on Well, y'all need to try harder. But th that's the <laughs> comedy of it. I like it. I'm not against it. I like seeing shit like that. Like, that's the type of shit that actually makes me laugh. Mm. Like... Imagine we did a bad acting on purpose. On type purpose, of shit. everything's yeah, yeah. bad on purpose. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that'd be kind of fire. <laughs> that shit would be hilarious. I don't know who the director. You don't need a director when you do a Tubi movie. You just turn the goddamn cameras on, <laughs> let it rip, and say action. All right, slide down. What else we got, Taylor? Let's do a couple more. When is don't Andrew going to reconsider running for president? J. Rude Din Sensei wants to know. When is Andrew going to reconsider running for? Nah, I ain't running for president. I don't want that shit. I don't want that shit. I want to just complain about politicians like everybody else. What a privilege that is for us to be in. <laughs> right? How privileged are we? Just bitch about politicians all day. Never run, not one fucking time. We don't want any of the responsibility. We just want to cry and complain. Well, well that's our fault because they put the power in our hands. So when they put the power in the voters' hands, the voters like, I am the one who put you in office, so I just I reserve the right to complain about you all fucking day long. 100%. Ooh, um, this is a good one. Dom D. Oh, this is a great one. This is a great one. Okay. Well, this is two. Let's do. I, I like these two. Schultz, what's something you notice about your fame compared to Guy Code Days? Um, I'm 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 in. It's more money. It's more money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. I don't think about fame like that. To be honest, yeah. like what this is way more. I guess where I'm at right now is way more satisfying because people know me from the things that I'm proud of. So they don't know me from like a three second uh, edit of me going like shave your balls, guy code. They, <laughs> you know, they know me. They know me for like the thing that I've dedicated my life to, which is stand up, and the other thing that I've dedicated my career to, which is podcasting. So it's awesome to be known for the thing that you're most proud of. That is the coolest. Thing I, I think if people went back, don't get me wrong, people that watch Guy Code definitely know the cast of Guy Code. But if they went back and watch Guy Code now it would blow their mind even more. What because, we were able to get away with? I mean, not, not that, but just the people. Oh, it's, it's, the talent it's, was it's crazy. It's you, it's me, it's Duval, it's Chris Stefano, it's Carly Aquilino, yep. it's Pete Davidson, you know what I'm saying? Yep. It's, it's Nicole Byer. Nicole Byer, you know, you, you, uh, Aqu Aquafina was girl cool, but you would go Still. back and watch it now and be like, Holy oh, shit. Oh, shit. Everybody in comedy came through this show? Yeah. Gabriel, like you'd be like, oh, okay. Yep. You said it would you would, it would actually hit harder now, I think. Maybe in That's a lot a good of ways. Ass point. All right, last question. Dom D says, name someone who is better at their craft than anyone else besides Michael Jordan. Floyd Mayweather. Fantastic fucking question. Floyd Mayweather. <sighs> Floyd Mayweather. Um, outside of sports. Ooh. That's what I would ask. Name Ooh. someone who's better at their craft than anyone else besides Michael Jordan. Charlemagne the God. Well, I'm okay. Charlemagne the God. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I I don't, I, I mean I'm genuine at that. Who would it be for comedy? You think? The living living right now. Either either or living or dead. I mean, I mean I I think Patrice for me that was the best that I ever saw it done. Obviously Chappelle. Um, Bill Burr. What, what 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 craft though? When you say Chappelle, I would say sketch. Oh yeah, that's top I would of the say top. Sketch. That's top of the top. Yeah, to me, when you talk sketch, then that's when I put top Dave of top in the Jordan echelon. He's up, don't top. get me wrong, he's up there as a stand up, of course. But I think there's still a debate. I think even with Chappelle's show, you might can debate in Living Color. I, I'll be honest, and I haven't seen as much Living Color as obviously I've seen yeah. plenty, but like. I don't think that anything has touched Chappelle. I think the closest Chappelle is actually Key and Peele. <sighs> Living bro, Color. Key and Peele has phenomenal sketches, Living Color sketches, was really bro. good. Though. I'm going to be honest with you. If I, ugh, I, I'd say, I, I would, if I had to debate in Living Color and Chappelle, I might put in Living Color over Chappelle. Really? Nah. Yeah, I really? No, no, it's really good, but you have to also take into uh, impact. Impact is so good. And Living Color had nah, that impact and, back and, then. I like Chappelle, though. I mean, Chappelle was a different time, but in Living Color, definitely had that impact back then. We just... It was more groundbreaking. It was... In Living Color, yeah. Yeah, Living Color was more groundbreaking. And Living Color was doing everything everybody's trying to do now 
but they did it effortlessly and organically. And I'm talking about just from the diversity play. Yeah. Every single race was represented on In Living but Color. SNL still had the numbers. I mean, because SNL was on fucking NBC every yeah, week. Wasn't, uh, wasn't that on like... No, Living Color was on Fox when Fox was first starting. I mean, that's still a network television. Still, but it's like you're talking about a legacy television show that created like all the comedy stars, you know, in the last fucking 30 years or whatever SNL but, was. But, and then a brand new show that pops up and like has culture. But, like, go, but once again, just like God Code, go back and look at In Living Color. Oh. You're talking. Carrie, J-Lo. Jim Carrey, Jamie Foxx. J-Lo. J-Lo, Keenan Ivory Wayans, Marlon Wayans. Like, they had monsters on In Living Color, yo. Tommy Davidson. <laughs> like, like in Living Color had mo- Damon Wayans All the Wayans All the Wayans Like, like in Living Color had monsters Yo low key Say it <laughs> Say it For that time period No Show has put out bigger names Jim Carrey And Jamie Foxx alone Alone Jim Carrey and Jamie Foxx alone on the same show SNL when listen, I'm, I'm talking about no, no, no listen, don't get me wrong. SNL, this is prior. Okay. When when is SNL have Chris Rock, Dana? Early nineties. And when is Chris wasn't even on there long though? No, but he was and on. Chris was on the Living Color for a little while. He was on. You got it. You got to give him credit. To, give him credit for it. Listen, don't get me wrong. SNL, you look at the pedigree, but you're also looking at like thirty years or something. It was a like legacy that. show, and. I'm talking about the same cast. Right. Like, Jamie Foxx and Jim Carrey Icons. were on the same cast. Now, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. When I think SNL, and I think of two icons, I'm talking about icons that came from SNL, is Will Ferrell and Eddie Murphy. Everybody else was stars. There's some stars that came from there. Belushi. Early. But it's, it, 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 like, the impact, Belushi was short-lived, right? Right, but... Really huge. big, of course, of huge. Moment. But you can't compare Belushi to Jim Carrey or Jamie. Or Jamie Fox, Fox, Dumb and man. Dumber, dude. Who? Blues Brothers. That's Will Ferrell. That's what I said. Will Ferrell. Oh, but the other guy in Dumb and Dumber. He oh, was he was an SNL. I thought he was. No, he was that like guy, a dramatic he... actor. Oh shit. Jeff Daniels. Yeah, yeah he wasn't he was SNL. High. No, like all of those people, like Tina Fey and all of them, they're great. They're legends. But, you, but I'm talking. We're talking about like Jamie Fox. Yeah, man. Jim Carrey. Come on, man. Those two alone, bro. It's like God damn. Damon Wayans. Oh, was on SNL for a little while too. People forget about that. I mean, dude, Damon Wayans had major pain. <laughs> Damon Wayans had like big iconic comedy. <laughs> Bro. He, and he also had the sitcom for fucking years. I think he had multiple sitcoms. Yeah, uh, uh, what was that shit called? Um, My Wife and Kids. My Wife and Kids. Yeah. But even when you think about his characters on In Living Color, Handyman, yeah. Homie the Clown. Bro. Like, you can't tell me homie, homie, homie Don't Play That had so much impact in culture back then. Oh, yeah, Homie Don't Play That. I was going to say, I, I, oh. So did, so did Chappelle, sock, but so did Chappelle characters. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's Chappelle, hard to compare everybody Chappelle. Everybody was quoting Chappelle. Yeah, it's hard to compare in Living Color to Chappelle's show because Living Color was such an ensemble cast. It's like Wu Tang versus Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it's like it's like there was so many superstars, icons on in Living Color. It's hard to compare that. How show many to seasons sh- was in Living Color? Uh, with the cast that was monsters, probably four, four or five. Four. So it was short. Five. Yeah, short. Yeah, it was short. Wow. It was really short lived. Um, yeah. I would I, I put George Carlin as somebody who's better at their craft than anybody else. Yeah. Besides Michael Jordan. Tom Hanks. Oh, dude. Tom Hanks is a fucking amazing actor. Man. I got to say, uh, I'll say uh, Robert Green as a writer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 40 Love oh, Power. Yeah. Let's, 33 what, Strategies of yeah, War. Yeah, what about like directors? Like... Uh, or Scorsese. Scorsese. Or like a Nolan. Like who's... Tarantino. Oh, Tarantino. Fantastic. That's why I want to do Brilliant Idiots, the Tubi movie. That'd be fucking amazing. Tarantino. That's his comeback. <laughs> Brilliant Idiots, the Tubi movie, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Yo, what about J.K. Rowling? Fire. Harry Potter girl. Fire. Come on, Who Fire. has created something Fire. of that size that's, and success? That's right. Yeah, but what do you consider her? If you're saying an author, is she the Michael Jordan of authors? I think authors? she's yes. the Michael Jordan of that genre. Of No, no, no. No, no, no. Genre. What is it called? Uh, Science fiction? Uh, t- uh, teen fantasy Why, or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Young adult fantasy. The go. Yeah, I think okay. that when you talk about people like that who've created something that is, sh- like, that's I don't, that's not even shifting culture. You created a culture. Bro, <laughs> like, there's... Like, like, 
I mean, you could. Oh shit! You could say she's the greatest author of ever. If you want to talk about talk about the actual impact of her writing, no, they would say Shakespeare is the goat. Shakespeare. Well, Shakespeare, Shakespeare might no not rides, have been one bro. person. True. Shakespeare, no Shakespeare ain't got no rides at Universal Studios. <laughs> Yo, that's bro. facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, rides, I, like Shakespeare ain't got no rides at Universal Studios. Ain't nobody dressing up as Shakespeare for Halloween, Chris. Yo. Yeah, but it, you know what I'm saying? It's been hundreds of years, and they're still performing Shakespeare in the park right now. Let's yeah, see. Let's them, see that, how long. Harry Potter's going to lie. Pull up before we go to like, the low. Shakespeare. That is a good hundreds point. of years. I think years. Shakespeare might be kind of trash on the low. Some hundreds of years, bro. Pull they up. still That's remaking crazy. the movies. They're still remaking the. Two, what's the, the what's the fi- what's the most fire Shakespeare shit before we get out of here? I, I mean, there's Romeo and Juliet. Juliet, Juliet, Hamlet, garbage. What? Romeo and Juliet is garbage now. Nah, when you go bro. back and watch it, Hamlet, Hamlet. What's the one with the black dude? Othello. Othello. He, he, he did a black fucking Zell. play back in the day. Denzel, that was crazy. Denzel would kill that uh, shit, too. I what, saw that. That shit sound like a fucking Macbeth. cigar. Othello oh. sound like cigars, bro. A midsummer yo, go night give me dream. two Othellos, yo. <laughs> go give me two Othellos, yo. Taming of the shrew. The fuck? Who the fuck can't tame a shrew? <laughs> stink, Y'all making excuses for this trash <laughs> shit, yo. Yo, do we really... Do we low key like inflate how good British things are? This yes. Shakespeare shit kind of trash, yo. We, we kind of do that, it. yo. Yo, you know how I know this shit <laughs> we trash? We kind of do that, yo. Because the Beatles, you be shitting on the Beatles. Oh. Now Shakespeare, I think that Great Britain had us, us seduced that everything that comes it's out of the, there is the, the most accent. sophisticated thing. It it's might the be the accent. Yeah. Accent. Oh, shit. Yo, you know how I know Shakespeare trash? This whole time I thought Shakespeare, yo, Shakespeare was a poet. Shakespeare was from Brooklyn, nobody right. giving a fuck. He was from Brooklyn? If he was. Oh. <laughs> if it was like, if it was like, Juliet, <laughs> let me buy you a dollar piece. By the way, would have been way better. Wait, oh, no, I thought bro. he was a poet all of this time, yo. He was a poet. He did that too. Pull up a, just pull up a soliloquy of this shit, man. <laughs> a sonnet. The Merchant of Venice. Just click some, put Shakespeare lyrics. Put best Shakespeare lyrics, Taylor. Oh, quotes, quotes. Go to quotes. Let's go to nah, quotes. Now he got bars, yo. Let's see, man. Let's see. Yeah, but if we talk about best living a test quote. of time, like, that's crazy, bro. I don't know. The, if only, per, the, the only person time, you could put man. it up, like, is whoever wrote the Bible. That's the only one that's laughing. Well, I would only slap like it used to. To be or not to be, that is the question. Oof. <laughs> all the world stage and all the men and women merely no, That's players. not a bar. To be or not to be, that is the question. That's hard. That's not even a question. <laughs> oh, here's hard. a fire bar. Here's a fire bar. A horse. <laughs> Damn, yo, bro. Shakespeare, that Shakespeare come on, yo. really had Shakespeare it, yo. Shakespeare said the course of true love never did run smooth. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. Nah, that was hard. That was hard. Bro, come on, man. Yo. The course it's, it's of true love is never smooth, bro. High That's... T, Dr. Seuss washes oh, Shakespeare. <laughs> Dr. Seuss come on, fucks Shakespeare up. Go to Dr. Seuss. Now, we look at all this bullshit come we on, just son. read. One now, fish, two Se- fish, red fish, blue fish. Bars. Come on. Come on. Son, Bars. Green, green eggs and ham. Come on. Go to Green eggs Dr. and ham. Dr. Seuss slap, real quick. Yo. Look, look. Come on. Watch this. Dr. Seuss shit slaps. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, Taylor what trying to spell Seuss is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Go, 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 go. <laughs> so, so, Taylor's attempt Yo, look at this Seuss shit. Today you are the... you that is truer than true. There is no one is alive that is you it and you. Man, Shakespeare wipes sucks dick. Yo, today <laughs> was good, today was fun, tomorrow is another one. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Come on, man. You just Fucking like it because it rhymes. Son. Yo, the more that <laughs> you read, the, the more hip-hop. things you will know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Come on, yo. Shoe spear. Don't. <laughs> Shoe spear. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happens. Whee! That's a bar, yo. I ain't gonna lie, that's a bar. Yo, Shakespeare is on weak legs. Hold on. Think left and think right and think low and think high. Oh, the things, the things you can think up if only you try. Nah. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your <laughs> shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. Man, get the fuck out of here, Shakespeare. Nah. <laughs> yo, get the yo, Shakespeare. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Doctor nah. Seuss wipes his ass with go Shakespeare. Go down. Go down. Go down. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Today I shall behave as this, this is down, that, hold on. If things start happening, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along and you'll start happening too. Man, you are crazy. It's um, better to know how to learn than learn how to know. Ooh. 
I like nonsense. Ooh. It wakes up the brain cells. Ooh. That's why people like brilliant idiots. <laughs> to the world, you may be one person, <laughs> but to one person, you may be the world. All right, case closed. <laughs> Goosebumps. Dr. Right. over Shakespeare That's all bump. day, every day. William could never. Never. William could never. Never. I didn't know he was dropping bars like that. Because you don't pay I attention. Did. I thought it was all Cameron lyrics. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought it was all that. By the way, I know that. Cameron over Shakespeare, bro. Okay, oh, stop. yeah. Cameron fucks Shakespeare up. Oh, yeah. Pause, pause, pause. I get computer pews? <laughs> Come on. Get the fuck out of here. Don't you, don't you still don't know. I get computer pews and I get shake, shaking. <laughs> Bullshit. As always, if you listen to this podcast, <laughs> you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.